another uh, daily lives type of video pero of course with the Yu-Gi-Oh twist ganito yan si Mimi uh, was on her way to of course uh, our, the first day back at Goha Corp pero inassign siya sa Gohanyum division so which is uh, basically 45 floors down <laughs> and uh, I think the core of uh, Goa's R&D uh, initiative, you can say that, because uh, the scientists here are very hardworking, and what they, 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 they are so hardworking, they, they tend to forget a few um, SOPs of the company, kaya nandun si Mimi, so to, let's say to, um, to keep the depart, to keep that division's finances in check, Kasi ang una niya napansin yung ano eh, yung maraming blankong expense sheets <laughs> ng, ng division na to. So, she, she has a lot of catching up to do when it comes to um, documenting that division's expenses. Now, lunch time na. So, talagang, she was working probably for 3 to 4 hours straight talagang, wow, makakaladong ka talaga ng gutom pagdating pag, pag patak ng alas 12. So, lunch time na. So, akit na siya ulit sa Akyat na siya sa canteen Which is on, uh, probably in the middle Middle part of the of Goa headquarters So Of course we all know that Romin Is part of the hungry division So siya yung Nasa kitchen siya mismo ng canteen Now Before um, Before Mimi actually Started her day Nakita sila ni Romin Um uh, Roman was asking her to to please try, nag, nag please pa nga eh, to please try her uh, any of her two curries yung dragas curry at saka prima guitar na curry and we all know how bad taste how uh, how bad each one of those curries taste okay ang ang may gusto na sa dalawang curry na to ay si Luke <laughs> so uh, nakita niya yung dalawang curry at Presentation pala, matuturn off ka ni. <laughs> so, nag-order siya ng sarili niya. Like, uh, parang ano yun, spaghetti. Tapos may drinks, syempre. O, oh, yun, 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 yun yung naging lunch niya. Nakita siya ni Romin. So, napansin, napansin siya na hindi umorder ng curries na nire-recommend niya. So, Romin took offense and challenged her to a rush duel. Kapag uh, nanalo siya kailangan tikman ni ni Mimi ang kahit alin sa mga curry na yon now uh, namagitan sa kanila yung chief mismo ng hungry division sinabi niya oh, oh sige siya mismo nagset ng condition para kay Mimi if Mimi wins both Dragas curry and prima guitar na curry are off the menu permanently so hindi yun hindi yun mga si Romin at after that, na, pumayag si Romin, nagbakaawa na sa kay Mimi na, na talunin si Romin. <laughs> this, um, uh, yung head kasi ng Hungry Division, droid siya. Pero, all the droids yata in the Hungry Division, they, they, they got smell sensors. And, they know how, uh, how bad the smell is from these two curries. Before that, Naglabas ng memo si Gakoto. He is the serious division kasi siya yung talaga yung uh, talagang pinaka, pinaka-enforcing body ng Goha ngayon in implementing its rules. Nag-release siya ng company-wide email. Pati ang hungry division, nakita yon, So, nabasa nila. It says in that email, There is a risk of explosion kapag hinalo mo ang dalawang curry na to. So, nakalagay talaga. Uh, I think sa title ng email Danger, do not mix Hence the title of the episode uh, The duel is on okay? y- Yung dalawang curry nandun sa Ano niya Sa kumaga nasa tabi Ng dueling field nag sila dun sa parang anti, um, anti Sa blast proof part ng Sa blast proof laboratory Ng Gohanyum Division Sinadjust kasi ng tatlong, ng tatlong head nun So Kumpisa na yung duel you can really say it was a back and forth duel dahil 
nagbabaan at nagtaasan ng life points. So, they were, um, what you call this? They were adding and decreasing each other's um, life points. At the same time, they were boosting and um, decreasing each other's monsters' attack. Tapos si Romin, di ba? It's part of her dueling style na magbayad ng life points. So, tuloy. So, at first talagang talagang back and forth in laban. Then, until lumo, naglabas ng dalawang monster si Romin, then, she activates Fusion. Aray! <laughs> she introduces her new ace. She can be live. Yeah. Uh, madali tandaan yung pangalan. So, I was not able to mention it to you. Excuse me. Eventually, Roman won. <laughs> uh, much to the dismay of Gakoto, the head of the Hungry Division, and, uh, yeah, yun lang, yun lang yun. Ngayon, after the duel, nilapitan ng tatlong head scientist si Roman. At uh, tanong nila, baka pwedeng kunin namin lahat ng curry na to. So, ang reaction ni Roman, Ay, ganun ba? Sige. <laughs> Pumayag naman kasi uh, akala yung siguro puring-puring sa kanya yung tatlong scientist uh, siguro nas nasarapan sa Carlin na to. Nope. Wrong thinking, Romin. These are scientists. So, nakita nila yung explosive ability ng dalawang Carlin mo. Final scene. Merong hindi pumayag sa notion na to. Obviously, si Luke. Dahil sa sobrang gutom niya, okay, naglalaway na siya sa gutom eh. Talagang pinigilan niya yung tatlong scientist na, na pag-experimentuhan yung dalawang curry. Siya mismo ang umubos ng curry nito. But, not without an explosion, siyempre. Kasi naghalo na yung dalawang curry. And while, um, while the lead characters of this episode are they're they're they're, they're, they're uh, well they are finding what Luke is doing disturbing <laughs> si Mimi um may nag-cross sa kanyang isip that was um na nangyari in the first part of the episode bakit puro you ang umpisa ng mga pa pangalan nila si Yuga at ng mga Goa siblings so, nagkaroon siya ng parang idea na hindi kaya si Yuga ang nawawala nilang kapatid? Hmm. We'll deep dive into that later. Now, let's break this episode down ARD style. Face! Well, um, from the moment na hinamon ni Romin si Mimi to a rush duel, naging intense na basic. <laughs> because, um, intense, not intense in a negative way, of course. Pero dito sa well, this is Yu-Gi-Oh Sevens. So, naging intense yung pacing on the level of hilarity. Kasi pinagpipili na pa rin ni Romy na masarap sa magluto, masarap din yung dalawang yung dalawang karmi na ginawa niya. <laughs> but in actuality, no one likes it except Luke. Because he is a curry connoisseur at ganong katiba yung ganong katiba yung digestive system niya. Hindi sumasabog sa dalawang pag nagmix sa dalawang curry na to, obviously. So, eh, well, of course, it uh, carried over to the dual scene. Natural. Pag may dual scene, the, the pacing picks up. So, no complaints. <laughs> no complaints. Kasi, uh, right after the dual scene, Nag-carry over pa yung intense pacing dahil talagang right what happened right after talaga nakakatawa eh. Matatawa ka talaga <laughs> sa ginawa ni Luke. Flow naman. First gear shift here was um the first time na pinaghinalaan ni Mimi na na, na kapatid ni Yuga ang mga Goa siblings based on their names alone. Kasi you lahat ang umpisa. Why did I call it a gearship? Simple lang kasi eh. It carried over to the final gearship. Mamaya. Explain ko. 
So second gear shift now is um, when bang Roman introduces her new ace. Yup folks, she can now use fusion. Meron na rin siya. So yeah, laking gulat ni Mimi. Uy. May fusion na babae to. Patay ako. <laughs> Ayun nga, uh, Mimi eventually lost. Talagang uh, malakas ang effect ng ng bagong ace ni Roman. Kumaga um kung ano yung effect ni Candy Finide X ang lakas nito ng effect nito. So, wow. What a way to introduce your new ace. At saka, um, she is probably, eka, kung sino ba nakagamit ng fusion aside from Yuga. Ayun nga, siga ko to. Now it's Romin. And of course, si Luke. Pero, I doubt that if he can, I doubt if he can use fusion ever again. Kasi, it's actually from the loop man. So we don't know. We don't know yet. So right now, yung normal na look ang hindi pa hindi pa nakakagamit ng fusion dito. So it's really nice to for Roman to have her own um to have her own fusion ace. So first Gakoto, now her. So, the um the fusion bandwagon is getting longer. Yun na napansin ko sa gear shift na to. Now, the final gear shift. Bakit ko sinabing carry over from the first gear shift? Simple lang. Kasi, pinaghinalaan uli ni Mimi si Yuga na uh, ito yung nawawalang kapatid ng mga Goa siblings. Point of contention number one. Yuga's last name is Odo. Ang mga Goa siblings, kaya nga Goa siblings eh. Goha ang family name nila. So, porkit magkapareho ang umpisa ng mga pangalan ni eh, magka, magkakapatid na? I don't think so. Here's my case in point. Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. Si uh, Yuya, Yuto, Yugo, at Yuri. They're not siblings. They are four um, parts of a whole personality named Zark. So, based on this, Mimi can't just um, deduce na si Yuga, kapatid nila, nila Yuro, Yuri, uh, Yuro, uh, Yuo, Eugene, sino ba ito? Ah, ay, ay, Yuka, I forgot the other guy's name. Eh. Basta puro Yu ang umpisa eh. Hindi po akit, Again, hindi porkit uh, pare-pareho umpisa ng mga pangalan nyo, magkakapatid na kayo. Nope! My case in point is Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. They are not siblings, the U-Boys. They are four parts of a whole personality. Kung maga, something happened, uh, siguro dimension, siguro sa lakas ng duel, pinaghiwa, uh, Zark, yeah, Zark was so evil, the, uh, the one who beat them in the duel had to... Uh, chop him down to four and to four different personalities. That's the deep dive there of Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. So based on that, Mimi can't just uh, assume na ito na ito yung nawaw, na si Yuga nawawal ng kapatid ng mga Goha. Nope. Pero um if you look at it superficially, pwede. You, but you have to settle the fact that um and then you take two you have to settle the issue of why Yuga is an Odo you know you know magig you know pinakamatinding point of contention siguro don pa o nga magkapareho ang umpisa ng mga first name nila pero when it comes to their family name the similarities end right there Yuga is an Odo. Um, the six, the five siblings are Goha. Yeah, you can really absolutely deep dive into the third gear ship. Ang pinaka point of contention ko rito is the one that happened in Yu-Gi-Oh! R5. Okay, the U-Boys. One representing a few, uh, representing a summoning technique. A uh, summoning tactic. Eh, magkakapareho din ang umpisa ng mga pangalan nila. But they're not siblings. So, 
Anyway, plot wise, malinis because um, medyo si Night Track tayo ng plot dahil sa um, all because of curry, all because of Roman's curries, kaya medyo si Night Track tayo. Pero um, like it or not, it is still part of the main continuity of the episode. But the bottom line of this episode was yung 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 nagging question ni Mimi which uh, started from the first third of the episode. Kumbaga, the plot made us understand that there is a hanging question need, that needs to be answered. Ayun. So pagdating ng final scene, pinaalala sa ating lahat na merong ganitong tanong pala si Mimi. If the plot wasn't this clean, hindi ko ma- hindi natin marirealize ito. Na, oy, oh ano? Merong merong burning questions si Mimi during uh, the first part of the episode. Hmm. It's actually a source of debate. Right now, you can debate it. Eh, okay? comment below. <laughs> Ajan na comments. So, pace, flow and plot they all came together for this episode giving us if not um, if you're not awed by the dual scene the pure hilarity of the episode yeah it'll, it'll keep you glued to your seats talaga <laughs> grabe talaga yung ipinagpipilitan ni Romy na mahusay siya magluto at yung dalawa niyang curry na to ang kanya mga obra maestra ah ami ah ah Romin the only one who liked both curries is Luke. And I don't know why. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 71. Yo, ship. It's a great episode. Mm. Two thumbs up! Balik tayo sa tanong na na ibinato ni Mimi sa atin. If you would deep dive into it, maraming pwede mangyari para maging odo si Yuga. Siguro, let's just say, okay, we're just theorizing here, na, oh, totoong goha talaga ang, ang last name ni Yuga. Pero, you still have to resolve the issue of him being an odo. Paano naging odo ang apelido niya. How? Sa nanay? We have yet to see any one of the lead characters' uh, parents. Even the parents of the Goa siblings. Up to now, no parent hasn't shown his or her face yet. Kung baga, ang pinaka-adult lang na lumabas dito, yung pinaka-mentor ni Romin yung nagbigay sa kanya ng prima guitar na yung dating uh, yung dating rock star that's probably the, that's probably the only adult uh, I see made an appearance in this uh, in this whole series talagang na-focus lahat sa mga batang lead character deep dive yup kaya tutukan na lang natin ang next episode <laughs> Baka may i-reveal doon. Palay natin. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 71. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this way, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's lifestyle. So what do we do now, mga ka-lifestyle? Ano pa ba? E di yung drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. So in the meantime, Enjoy the other reviews in this time. Well, we uh, well, we picked up from where we uh, we left off at episode eleven. So, Fena is finally shown what uh, she was born to do. Literally, she has to make a choice now between destruction and uh, leaving the world as it is pero uh, we're learning siya ni Cody at ng spirito ng tatay niya that either way she will lose her memories so 
Memories of the Goblin Knights. Everything that has happened so far in her life. Uh, yeah, most especially, of course, the Goblin Knights. Yung naging barakada niya. Um, shockingly, she chose. Uh, bro, yeah. Uh, it, that, that's um, that's the way. Uh, well, it's it's what the episode was showing after she made that choice. She wanted the world as it is. So, uh, nagpapalam na nagpapalam na siya kay kay Yukimaru, and well, well, Yukimaru just wanted to let her go. So. Uh, nagbakaawa sa Yukimaru na to, to, to for Fena to stay to uh, to always be with him and well uh, Fena just told Yukimaru to well she will lose her memories and um this is her destiny eh sinabi na ng Niko ni Yukimaru that if you do lose your memories, I will find you wherever you may be. And well, uh, Yukimaru just found himself on an island with a new look, Fena. She completely has no no recollection of what of what happened or, or who even Yukimaru is. So nagbakilan nila si Yukimaru, and Yukimaru. And your Fena. Then the Bonito comes in. And wow. Hindi lang pala yung espada ang kinuha ng mga Goblin Knights. Pati yata yung inuus yata nila lahat ng kayamanan doon sa buong, sa buong kwebang yun. Because here they are with a lot of treasure on the on the forward bow of the Bonito. Natural. They couldn't submerge. Kasi... Na, nakalant, nakalantang lahat ng kayamanang ito sa ibaba ng ng submarine nila eh. so yo, Yukimaru in, and uh, the new Fena just told everybody that uh, Fena has no memories of them whatsoever so well eh, sinabi na lang nila Ashitan abay eh, kung ganun <laughs> let's travel around the world to all the to all the spots that you have been to with us so, yun nga ang ginawa nila final scene uh, they've been every at every place they have been all throughout this journey just to help Fena remember. So ang naalala lang ng ang naalala lang talaga ngayon ni Fena ay ang kanyang tunay na pangalan yan, Fena Houtman. So that's a start. And one night uh, binigay ni Yukimaro kay, kay Fena yung ginawa nilang dagger para sa kanya, yung ginawa nila ni Karin. Yukimaru finally professed his love for Fena. And all of a sudden, Fena um, hits him on the head. Like like what he usually does when Fena makes a mistake. Ganon. Pero, ang gamit ni Fena, yung kahon na may dagger. Which is more dangerous. So, pa! Eh, natuwa na. Well, napangiti na sila pareho. And, uh, the anime ended with with uh, Fena's own words. I've been waiting for him to say those words a long, long time. <laughs> so, a yeah, killing moment to uh, to close the anime. Let's just break this episode down ARD style. Base. Well, um, first half of the episode. Ane, first two thirds of the episode was uh, was rather tense. Cause Cody. And uh, Franz were were actually showing Fena what would happen if she chose this, and if she chose this, and uh, I can tell you, um, I could really feel what Fena is go what Fena was going through in those scenes. Talagang wow, it was a visual roller coaster, so to speak. Kasi talagang pinakita ng dalawa kung ano mangyari kapag ito ang pinili ni Fena or kapag ito ang pinili niya. And so, well, obviously, she made the decision of leaving the world as it is. Why 
put the world on reset now. Eh di ang mga ang dihado rito. All all the people around her. All the people that have loved and cared for her. So, yun nga. The Goblin Knights, especially si Yukimaru. Yung dalawa niyang servidor. Um, her long-time friend on that island when she... Or the island she grew up in. And even their former adversaries. Uh, Omari's former crew, pinakita. Pero hindi naman sila... Na, hindi naman sila... Uh, ano eh? Kumbaga... Literal na nagpaabot ng mga Goblin Knights. No. Uh, talagang pinakita na some of O'Malley's crew uh, survived that ano, that attack by by uh, Abel. So, why change, well, siguro ang ika nga ni Fena, why change something now that has been that has been good to you over the months that you've been on this journey? Bakit mo papalitan? Well, Fena made the right decision because she still has Yukimaru. Kaya, no complaints about the pacing. Talagang, it really brought us to um, an emotional roller coaster ride. Yeah, because of those multiple scenes in the first two thirds of the episode. And eventually, wow, my heart sank when Fena lost her memories. At ni si Yukimaru hindi na niya makilala. You, although she had a new look, but uh, her old memories are gone. So the pacing of that episode will make you, um, will make your heart sink for Fena. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was uh, when Cody started it off in making Fena see what her choices, what the consequences of her choices may be. Why did I call it a, a gear shift? <laughs> Simply lang. It set off the episode. It set off the finale. Kasi, uh, Aiden has been calling to Fena ever since she was a kid. Yun pala, ang, ang pinaka-ancestor niya, si, si, si Jean Lapusel, who eventually became Joan of Arc. Totoo yun. Confirmed yung theory natin na direct descendant ni Joan of Arc si Fena and wow what a bloodline it but she quite she has quite an illustrious bloodline because well we all know what happened to Joan of Arc she is now the patron saint of France that's what this gear shift will make you realize but second gear shift is when the moment she said her goodbyes to Yukimaro wow Hindi ko alam kung kikiligin ako or malulungkot ako. Because right after because right after she made that this choice, she lost all her memories of the Goblin Knights, especially si Yukimaru. Ayo pero right there and then na yon na realize natin lahat na she's no longer the old Fena. Medyo Again, my heart sank. That's what this gear shift will make you feel. Final gear shift was, well, probably the final scene of the anime where Yukimaru finally, okay, finally tells what he feels for Fena. Finally, Yukimaru, you fucking man up. <laughs> you know, because all. All throughout this anime, um, Shitan has been insisting proverbially to Yukimaro just to just man up and tell Fena how you feel. But Yukimaro being the tough guy, uh, he still wants to project wants to project that tough guy image. Nope. I'm not. <laughs> I'll still be Fena's protector. You know, eventually Siguro yung uh, the loss of her memories really, really got to Yukimaru. And now, uh, he's now facing this, uh, this crisis. Well, him and the, all of the Goblin Knights are now facing this crisis of, uh, of, of helping Fena uh, restore her memories. 
So, talagang, they went literally around the world to every place that Fena has been all throughout this journey. Talagang, pinalikan nila lahat yun. Now, well, they, they can do that because they got a submarine for a vehicle, okay? It's the Bonito 2. So, wow. Kaya, sinasabi ko sa inyo, steampunk anime. May pagka-steampunk ang anime na to because of that submarine. Kaya, wow. So many things that this gear ship will make you realize. Pero, the most prominent one is finally Yukimaru mans up. Pero uh, there's a sign that Fena is on the way to recovery. Kasi yung yung feelings ni Yukimaru para sa kanya wala. Up to now, up to this point, hindi parin niya makalimutan. So well, natuwa naman siya. So I guess. The old Fena is slowly coming back despite her new looks. She now looks more like a pirate than a princess. Kaya You know what this You know what this gear ship is also telling me? Give us a season 2 production IG. Please. So, these three gear ships, yep. Panoorin nyo lang ang mga gear ship na to and you will totally understand what went down in the finale. Bloodwise. Malinis. Malin. <laughs> Come on guys. You can't call this a well ironed out plot kasi uh, practically the spirits of Eden are um, telling Fena what um, uh, what she must do. So she has to choose between destruction and leaving it as it is. Obviously, she chose the latter. Obviously. So you really need a plot this clean to totally understand the finale. And you will absolutely uh, your heart will sink because of what because of what went down thanks to the plot. So pace, flow and plot. They all came together for the finale of of this anime. And yeah, it's giving us Easter eggs as to uh, whether Fan is going to get another season or not. May Easter egg jan. Anapin nyo na lang. So, Fan of Pirate Princess finale. Let's now talk about the prospects of Fena Pirate Princess having a second season. Although nothing was uh, announced as, uh, as, uh, as of what I know. Pero, given Production IG's track record of uh, probably giving fans what they want, or, uh, talaga may nakanta na silang prior uh, uh, susunod the season, they might. Based on well, uh, on previous animes that I've seen from production IG, like Moriarty the Patriot, yeah, bilikan nila la season two yan, and um, uh, yeah, so far good. Because the noblest is yinte ko rin mag second season eh, but up to now, no news yet for production IG. Pero sana maganda naman yung naging ending ng finale, eh. so. I'm quite satisfied with, with how went how it all went down. So let's just hope and pray. If you're already a fan of this anime, you better hope and pray that uh, production IG gives it another run. Pero ang gane, um, with uh, Fena's right now uh, problem of restoring her memories. Pwede nilang sabayan ng newly acquired skills ito eh. Yung, yung pagkabobo niya, nandun pa rin eh. Nandun pa rin. So that's a sign that the old Fena is slowly coming back. And of course, yung uh, hanggang ngayon, alam pa rin niya na nakakalata pa rin niya kay Yuki Maro na mahal siya nito. So, eh, the feeling's mutual. Eh. Uh, she likes Yuki Maro too. So, that's also a start. 
So, well, habang hinihintay natin, thank you, Production IG, for giving us this kind of an anime. It's a great alternative to One Piece. I can now confidently say, if you're uh, if you're tired of One Piece storyline, you can always go for Fan of Pirate Princess. Again, well, to the main pro tag, thank you, Fana, for um, for brightening our anime days. Galeng, galeng, galeng. So again, probably for the final time, Fana Pirate Princess finale. This was another mic drop. So what do we do now? Well, for you, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Oh my God. Garito pala sila kung eh, kung i-activate for a mission. <laughs> so while 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 Kuruma was so uh, is so gung-ho about uh, indoor camping suddenly all the blinds went down uh, lights dimmed and and their flat screen TV suddenly turns on ganun pala yan so lalabas ay yung logo ng Japan Safety ibig sabihin nun may mission sila now binibrief sila ni ano eh ng, ng kanilang chief yung mataba natulugan na ng Japan Safety yung uh, yung pag yung paglabas ng shard number five, as we saw in the final in, in the final scene of the last episode. So ayun, dinispatch na yung uh, yung team nila botan to the scene. So they go to Chicago, Chicago pala. Wow, they're now caught up in this gang war between um between the Tioni between the between uh Tioni and Black Block. Typical gangster war of the 1930s. Yung tipo nila Al Capone nung araw sa kanila nila uh, si may mga heads nun. Basa uh, Al Capone ruled the Chicago crime scene at the time. Ganito ang scenario nun. On a uh, on a Sunday midday. So nasa coffee shop sila. The streets are empty until Tioni's group came to uh, came at a halt in front of a church. Eh, yun pala, magsisimba pala si Tioni. Dahil nagbalik na ang gang war nila, ayun. The streets are practically empty. Parang, well, if you, if you live in the Philippines during the start of the pandemic here, when the government declared an ECQ, mm, the streets were empty for weeks. Ganong, ka, ganong kalinis ang kanye dito sa, sa episode na to. Uh, ang tipong gumagalaw lang yung mga lumilipad na dyaryo. <laughs> it's that scary. No, Botan figured that. Hmm. Kasi nakita niya yung ano eh. Yung si Tioni, mga Tuan, tsaka yung second in command niya. She can lip read. So, na nalaman niya yung buong conversation. So, na-deduce na kagad na. Hmm. The one that has shard, that has the shard is the second in command. Yung number two. Number two ni Fioni. Eh, di naman, di naman niniwala kala si Kuruma. Nor, uh, pero, si Ryunosuke, sabi niya, pwede. Uh, all of a sudden, nagkabarilan. Dumating kasi ang, ang grupo ng Black Block. Ayun, they started bullets. It started raining bullets. Palitan ng putok. Eh, nasa harapan pa sila ng simbahan. And, Botan, um, having that sense of justice again, would not uh, just stand by and watch these watch these guys kill each other. So nakialam siya. The bullets made her retreat inside the church. So sinong dandi siya ni Kuruma? All of a sudden, Pregera, uh, uh, the um, the alias the press gave this guy who was being used who was, who was killing with lightning. E yung pala may hawak sa shard. It's Brigera's work kasi may mga kidlat-kidlat na tumatama sa, lo sa loob ng church. 
Sa loob ng simbahan, ha? Sa loob ng simbahan, uh, kumikidlat. It fired on uh, Theonis men. Then, nung uh, pagpasok na pagpasok ng black block, tinira rin sila. Muntik nang mapuruan si si Botan dito and on, and suddenly the priest came along to help her. I-rescue siya. Yun pala, si Mickey Miller pala ito. Yung kumuha ng shard number 13 sa episode sa episode 2. Yup, that's him. That's the same guy. Yun ang, yun ang sumid kay Botan. Eventually, so... Uh, nagharap na yung dalawang paksyon uh, groups yung team ni Mickey Miller at saka ni, ni Oliver Thornton they're both Americans uh, of course the Japan safety guys sila Botan yung pala Mickey and Oliver are CIA agents <laughs> pinagbinta nga nga pa, pa sila ni Rinosuke na member ng a small house eh. so nagulat si Mickey So you know small so you know about a small house we're after them as well Sinabi na pala nung araw ni Nikola Tesla kay kay uh, kay, kay President Har- kay Harry Truman who was already the president at the time to do everything uh, he can to um, to keep the world safe from his own shard According to Oliver's um, uh, story this is the real reason why Harry Truman established the CIA. Eh, yun din ang object din ng Japan Safety eh. So, lumalabas ngayon, Japan Safety and the CIA are two organizations uh, with the same purpose. To, well, to retrieve the shards. Kasi, yung mga founders nila ay kinausap mismo ni Nikola Testa bago siya namatay. Pero, it's obvious. Uh, Japan Safety sees the CIA as competitors. The feeling is mutual for the CIA. So, kumbaga, they, they went their separate ways. Sinabi na lang ni... In essence, sinabi na lang ni Botan, may the best man win. Eh, sinabi na... Eh, we all know how arrogant Mickey Miller is. Sinabi lang niya, I'm gonna lose to you amateurs. So, sabi ng chick nila ngayon, kailangan maunahan natin ang CIA sa pag-retrieve ng mga shards na yan. Especially this one. Kailangan malaman natin kung sino ang nagpapagalaw sa shard na yun. And, uh, Bolton suggested that is there any way to to avoid um, future bloodshed between these two gangs pa just for us to get the shard? Sinabi rin kagad ng chief nila, no. Pero, Umagri si Kuruma at si Ryunosuke kay Botan. So, majority wins. A plan is hatched. Pagdating nila Mickey and Oliver doon, so, nandun din yung tao ni Theonis. Actually, doon sila nakita-kita sa sa, mans- sa mansion ng Black Block, ng, ng pinaka-godfather nila. So, so, sinugo, sinugod sila ng mga tao ni Theonis. Yung kabilang paksyon. So, talagang gang war. Daming barel. So, nag, na, nag-barrel na na. At sinabi na lang ni Mickey na just to wake him up when it's all over. Ngayon, nagtaka si Oliver kung bakit biglang tumigil ang putukan at nawala, nawala lahat ng tauhan ni, ano, ni Theoni. So, nagtaka rin si Mickey. Uy, ano ba, ano ba, ano ba nangyari siya? Ba't ganyan ang itsura mo? So, tinignan niya. Ha? Ba't ba na? So, nakita rin nila na may... Na nandun sila Kuruma at ano eh. Nandun si Rinosuke at yung chief. So, sila may pakana. So, sinabi na kaagad nila ni Mickey. So, they're here as well. <laughs> Ngayon, yung mga tauan ng Black Block, inasikaso naman nila Kuruma at ni Botan. Ganon din. Lupasay sila. Pero, ne, iba yung itsura. Pagpasok nila Tioni at ng second in command niya, lupasay yung lahat ng, tao, lahat ng tauhan ng Black Block. Until they came to this room, nakatali ang big boss nila. E sinabi na lang ng big boss ng Black Block, two people just just came into to my mansion and knocked all of my men unconscious at ito, tinali pa rin ako, nilagyan pa ako ng gas mask. So, yun pala pinatulog. <laughs> Final scene. This must be part of Botan's plan. Kasi kung hindi nagpapatayan nga naman ng dalawang ang dalawang grupong ito, 
In, magpapakita, magpapakita ng tuluyan si Pregere. Ayun, nagpa, si Pregera. Nagpakita nga. Si, si Bose pala yun. Yung second in command ni Fioni. So, isa ka di open. Lumabas na sila, sila Botan at Kuruma. And, lumabas na rin sila Mickey Oliver. Stand up! <laughs> Let's break it down now, ARD style. Excuse me. Now. Pace. Nag-slow down lang ang pace nung uh, naghiwalay na lang das ang, ang mga CIA agents at ang grupo ni Botan. So, kasi they were, they were trying to figure out how to, uh, how to get the shard or how to expose that shard user without getting these two groups to kill each other uh, further. Doon lang, doon lang bumaga yung pacing. So, the rest of the episode, tense. Because it involves two Chicago gangs who, um, who just went into a peace accord. Then when Preguera showed up, that peace accord went down the drain. So, talagang, well, probably not since the 1930s, the streets, the streets of Chicago have been empty because of this gang war. <laughs> Need I say more about the pacing? Flo naman! Well, first gear shift where was um when um Botan started lip reading Fiona's group that went into church. Bye ko din ako na gear shift. No brainer. Nagdijuice na kagad ni Botan kung sino talaga ang may hawak ng shard. Right there and then. Pero, at first, hindi siya, hindi sila, hindi siya pinaniwalaan ng mga kasama niya. Sinami niya kagad. Si, ano yan? Si Bossy yan, yung number two ni Fioni. But in the end, tama ang suspecha niya. So, it's only the second time that um, that the rest of the group did not um, uh, did not take Botan's word for it. What, did it. what does this gear shift tell you? Well, simple lang. Botan is a gifted detective. Moro na mag-libreed yung babae. At ganun kalayo na li-libreed niya. All, all she needs is binoculars. Pero, um, in this case, she, she didn't use binoculars just to lip-read those people. Na, na, napasa niya kagad na sinasabi ng mga, ng mga taon na Fioni. <laughs> you know, if this if this trend continues of not believing Botan uh, on her first, first impression of the case, wala. Matatalo ang Japan City sa CIA. Botan is the, uh, Botan is a key member of this team. If they don't take her seriously, wala. Matatalo talaga sila nila, nila Miket Oliver ng CIA. Matatalo talaga sila. Kasi, well, Siguro paramihan ng paramihan ng shard to. Now, uh, the CIA has one and they're about to get this one as well. Kung uh, kung hindi magsi-shape up ang team ni Botan. Second gear ship was when what? We finally know who these two guys are. Akala nga natin a small house eh, yung pala CIA. Like I said in the pilot during my review of the pilot Japan isn't the only country interested in the shards. This confirms it. Mm. CIA! Ang Amerika! <laughs> Natural! This gearship confirms my, uh, my initial theory that Japan is not the only country interested in the shards of Tesla. Ayun pala, ayun. Lumabas na yung story ang yun. That on his deathbed, Nikola Tesla called Harry Truman na uh, I think I think president elect na siya nun. hindi pa siya na si swear in as president pero nanalo na si election so tinawag siya ni tinawag siya ni, ni Tesla at kinausap that if ever the shards go um what you call this um come out in the open without uh what you call this by force 
You have to do something to get them all back. So, so ano malamas ngayon? Um, this is the actual reason why Harry Truman formed the CIA. So, kung baga ang story ng ito ni Nikola Tesla ang naging basehan ng existence ngayon ng CIA. Just for this. And now, uh, Mickey and Oliver considers the Japan safety guys amateurs. Hello? They also have the same cause. Um, the founder of Japan Safety also also talked to Tesla about it. Actually, ito talaga ang kaibigan ni Tesla. So, yun din ang binilin sa kanya. So, hindi. Kinagana rin niya yung mga galamay niya. Ayun, he forms the... He forms the Japan Safety Company. Kaya, talagang, uh, talagang magiging at odds ang Japan Safety at CIA dito. Kasi paro silang, they're both organizations that talagang binase ang kanilang existence sa mga huling habilin ni Nikola Tesla. <laughs> That's why I call it a gear shift. Final gear shift was, ayun, the final scene. Finally, Um, the shard user shows himself. Tama si Botan all along. Si si Bossy nga yung uh, number two ni Fioni. He is Prigera. Now, let me give you uh, something about why his name Prigera. Kasi lahat ng naging biktima niya yung tatlong kasi yung grupo ni Fioni apat silang Godfather don. Tatlo pinatay niya. Lahat ng biktima niya, kahit yung mga namatay dito through, through that shard, by means of that shard, pagkamatay, yung bangkay na lang halos nakaganon. Parang nagdadasal, nakaganon. At saka, severe electrocution yung nangyari. Kaya lahat ng ugat nila, lalabas yun. So magiging, oh, mag, mag, even with the naked eye, you can see the blood vessel, yung kanilang arteries, naglabasan ng ganon. It's a sign of severe electrical shock. So, that's why it's called Prigera. It means prayer in Italian. Where, where did this episode take us? Chicago! And daming Italiano dyan. <laughs> Up to now, maraming Italiano dyan. Maraming Italian-American dyan. So, yun ang, yun ang, yun ang, kumbaga, yun ang sinasabi ng gearship na to sa atin. It, Botan's assumptions should not be taken for granted. This is the second, this is probably the second time her, um, her, her hunch was right. Pero, binaliwala, binaliwala lang nila kuruma. If this keeps up, the CIA will eventually win. So, Ganun talaga. Eh, wala kang tiwala, wala kang tiwala sa youngest member niya eh matalino tong babae ito eh. So, you got to trust her. You got to trust her kahit kahit sa kahit sa glit lang. So these three gearships that I saw will play a role down the line in this anime. All of them. Plot wise, except for the, the little backstory sequence where kinakausap ni Tesla si Truman on his deathbed, malinis ang plot. Talagang in-emphasize yung main continuity ng episode na to because nag- nagkaharap na yung dalawang naglalaban ng faction para sa, sa pagkuha ng mga shards na to eh. The CIA and Japan Safety. So, what's next for them? If the plot um is telling me something, it's this. Instead of competing, why not work together to gather all the shards? Lalo na ito. Nakahanap ng user ang shard na to. So, na- nakurap na ang isip nito. Malamang. Instead of um, one-upping each other, why not work together? Ipagkasundo nyo na lang kung sino kukuha. Kung sino magtatago. That's what the plot is trying to uh, to tell me. Kung hindi ganito kalinis ang plot na to, I wouldn't mind. Uh, baka 
hindi ko dinit dive ito. If it's if it's too obvious, baka tinamad akong i-deep dive. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode, giving us another one, another great one from this anime. We now know the identities of these two agents that are that have been following the Japan safety guys for yeah for yeah for a good three episodes now. Akala natin a small house? Nope. Something worse, the CIA. <laughs> if it violates the interests of the United States, definitely the CIA will show itself. So. Tesla Note, episode 4? Huwag isip pa ba tayo? Oh! <laughs> Two thumbs up! Alam nyo mga ka-lifestyle, uh, I'm not so surprised kung merong ganitong twist sa storyline ng anime na to. Spy thriller eh! All countries have uh, have spy networks all over the world. Uh, malaki man yan o maliit. This is what this episode will tell you. Lahat ng bansa sa buong mundo may sari-sariling network of spies yan. Whether they admit it or not. Well, uh, the most obvious of them all is the CIA. <laughs> Everyone knows how the CIA operates. But they, they continue to deny it. So, this episode probably will give you an inkling of how they operate. I tell you guys, if the CIA and Japan safety don't uh, don't get their act together by working together, this will uh, it's now in the civilians' hands. Basically, one of the shards. Nakita natin lahat sa episode nato kung gano kadelikado ang shard nato. It grants the user the ability to control lightning. Mal mal malator ang dating mo. Mal God of Thunder ka. Kaba may kaaway ka? Oh, use the shard. Pok! <laughs> Tapos ang usapan. At saka, well, there's no... Uh, no blood will come out. Kasi, electrocution yung nangyari. Kaya, tamang sabi ni Tesla rito. Uh, through, through several backstory sequences already. If the shards get tampered with by the wrong hands, chaos will ensue. Kaya, sa dalawang, sa dalawang tao niya siguro, yan, sa dalawang tao nga niya ibinilin ang, ang safety ng mga shards na to. So, through Japan and the US. Okay? So, pero, yeah, I tell you guys, as long as the CIA and Japan safety don't work together, walang mangyayari sa anime na to. Kung, ti, kung, kung tiyo sila maglala, mag, Ma, ma, magpapataasan ng ihi dito Chaos will ensue So again Tesla Note Episode 4 Two thumbs up Another two thumbs up for this anime mga kamarista Grabe CIA So what do we do? Well We do the drill We wait for next week And watch the next episode Kapanapanabik, stand off yung final scene. So, may continuation to. But, in the meantime, mga ka lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Um, before I completely forget the. the. Um, this episode, I'm gonna run it down as quickly as I can. First story, well, uh, a vampire comes into the office and hindi nga baka maniwala na vampire to eh. He looks so grotesque, even, uh, even, even Drallog finds him offensive. So, ang problema pala nito, kaya pala lumapit kila Ronaldo, uh, he just couldn't control his transformation power. Eh, sabi naman ni Drallog, uh, it's not unusual because there are there are times that vampires couldn't couldn't control the transformation powers. Well, they demonstrate that he, even he can uh, can't uh, assume a definite form. So what does Ronaldo do? He kills him. <laughs> Grabe. But later on, they figure out nila na oy, medyo malalim pala ang problema nito. 
instead of um, suppressing his sexual desires yeah, that's that's it's what fuels his um uh his transformation problem he overloads siya ng sexual desires okay sige naglabas ng uh nilabas lahat ni Ronaldo ng kanyang porn magazines and even his laptop i think that was uh that that he uses for porn <laughs> so na overload yung vampire and he suddenly felt satisfied so wow uh, he can well I don't know what why the episode ended there but I think he's on his way to recovery <laughs> so second story now um, someone sends a package over to to Ronaldo pinosan nila Vampiric vegetables pa naman So It quickly infested the house And wow Talagang hindi na nila makontrol And They've, tr- they've tried ways to uh, To uh, What you call this To Put it under control Even eat them Pero No can do Kasi Pag vampiric Pag vampire status ng isang gulay Any, any kind of vegetable it tastes really bad <laughs> kasi niluto ni Dralok yung iba eh tapos uh, hinain niya kay, kay Ronaldo and yeah Ronaldo uh, found a disgusting taste to it it suddenly hit on Ronaldo that uh, oi teka muna so vampire vegetables sa mga to mmm okay sige he went over secret stash kasi doon sa sa hing meron pala siyang secret stash of uh, yung mga pangontra sa vampire even garlic yes even garlic so yun ang itinapon niya sa mga vampire vegetables the garlic became vampires too and lo and behold it started eating the other vegetables hanggang sa tuluyan ng nalinis ang bahay as in yun nga lang nadamoy din si Dralok <laughs> so third story well a guy named Honda from from the vamp from VCR uh, Vampire Control Regiment para ba uh, ano VRC pala Vampire um, what is uh, Vampire Control so pumunta sa bahay nila at gustong examinin si si Dralok on orders daw ni Hinaichi kasi we all know Hinaichi is a vice captain so talagang mataas ang rango nito who actually handles Dralok's case so in isolate ni Honda si Dralok and started interrogating him not uh, about uh, his uh, his status his exploits but Ronaldo Teka So nagtaka si Dralok Uy Bakit ang tinatanong Ang tungkol kay Ronaldo Hindi Hindi ako Eh yun pala May May backstory pala Ang dalawang ito Um uh, Honda's Mother uh, Is a big fan Of Ronaldo Even be, Even when they were in high school Eh Kung baga lumalabas Kababata pala ni Ronaldo ito Ah uh, Honda is a dampier so he's half vampire ang vampire pala yung nanay niya but who is a big fan of Ronaldo she already has copies of uh, volumes 1 and 2 of the Ronaldo Chronicles and he, and uh, Honda could not forgive uh, Ronaldo for that so he really wants to kill Ronaldo so nagkahalap siya ngayon ng uh, butas para ma- ex- either ma expose si Ronaldo or uh, makes uh, VRC higher ups give him the authorization to give him the authorization to kill Ronaldo so parang uh, yeah talaga nagkano siya ng butas para ma ma ilaglag si Ronaldo eh. and well eventually uh, they him and Dralok 
deduce that this secret closet has the um, has a uh, has damning evidence against Ronaldo. So, sige. Hindi nila ma whether it be from outside or inside, hindi pa nila ma mabuksan yung lock. Pero ginawa ng paraan ni Dralok. Okay, sige. Hoy, ano to? Ibidensya to. Okay, sige. He turns himself into ash. So, para mai para mai sit out siya ni Handa. And yun, uh, nakalata yata si Ronaldo. He storms into the room. Ayun. Nalaman pala niya na, okay. Sige. Okay. Ibidensya siya. Sige, buksan nyo. Okay. <laughs> so, binuksan ni Handa. E yun pala, love letter sa kanya ng nanay ni Handa. <laughs> Out of utter frustration. Well, kasi fan letter eh. Pero, uh, parang, parang love letter na rin kasi. kasi Nag-profess yata ng feelings kay Ronaldo ang nanay niya. So, out of uh, utter anger, frustration, he he jumps out of a window. Ayun, di na nagpakita. So, uh, a few minutes later, tinawagan ni Ronaldo si Hinaichi. At pinapabayad niya kay Hinaichi yung nasirang ano, bintana. <laughs> Ayun, eventually nalaman din ni Hinaichi na uh, Handa went to Dralo uh, without her authorization. Mm. So si Handa ngayon ang patay kay Hinaichi. So let's break it down. AR this time as much as we can. Okay. Pace. Um, yeah. Uh, the usual pacing for three stories. It's not... Uh, it's not so fast that you won't be able to understand each of them and it's not too slow para mabore ka tama tama lang yung pacing kasi it, it is a comedy anime so yung pacing whether be three stories or not kailangan medyo mabilis yung pacing para talagang uh, ma-elicit mo yung emotion of laughter sa audience. Yeah, it's it's what the pacing did to me. Okay. Flow naman. Well, the biggest gear shift in the first story was um, was when Ronaldo finally figured out what the vampire's problem was. His out of control nature is elicited by sexual desires. So, okay. So, ito pala ang problema mo. Okay. Hindi ko isusupress yan. Kahit siguro ni Ronaldo bilang kapa mo lalaki. O ito, yung overload kita. <laughs> eh, eh, meron din pala, eh, meron din pala mga tinatagong porn magazines at, uh, uh, porn pics si Ronaldo. So, yun, pinagbibigay niya. <laughs> the, 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 the resulting ending was, Grabe. Eh, kahit si Dralok masyake. <laughs> so, uh, well, why did I call this a gear shift? Sim- simply lang. Through this gear shift, um, uh, it totally prepared us for uh, a really funny ending. So, biggest gear shift naman ng second story was when, well, Dralok uh, figured out that whatever is inside that closet Holds the uh, holds Ronaldo's ultimate secret. Why did I call it a gear shift? Well, simply lang, kasi hindi natin malalaman na fans pala ni Ronaldo ang nadey ni Handa, which pisses Handa off really good. Now, if it weren't for this gear shift, we would also we wouldn't also know that Handa is a rival of Ronaldo over at. VRC So, hindi pala si Hinaichi ang rival ni Ronaldo dito kundi si Handa kasi they go way back way back So, grabe So, biggest gearship naman ng final story is when uh, Ronaldo uh, remember that he has garlic in his secret stash Now, kasi well, we I totally get the idea if Ronaldo is able to make this garlic, this uh, piece of garlic turn into vampires. Uh, I suppose he acted on a hunch. Kasi kung, 
kung ang, kung ang mga bawang nito ay magiging vampire, they would totally take out the other vegetable vampires. Kasi, garlic sila. He's probably um, uh, sold on the fact that uh, that if vampires hate garlic, garlic also hates vampires. So, yun nga nangyari. What did I call this? It's simple lang. It, well, triggered the ending. It triggered the ending. And it gave us another funny ending. <laughs> so, these three gearships that I saw, siguro yung pangalawa. Yung pangalawa ang magkakaroon ng factor sa uh, sa anime down the line. Because, I don't know if you can call Honda an ally. He, he, he hates Ronaldo. So, I think he, he's, he, he will meddle uh, again down the line in this anime, si Honda. Well, he did act beyond uh, beyond Hinaichi's orders. Aba, teka muna. Usurpation of authority ginagawa mo. Porque, uh, porque masuspecha ka parati kay Ronaldo, gaganyanin mo na? Nope. So that's a little dynamic to uh, to to deep dive into down the line. Yeah, it'll play a role in this anime. Plot wise, planchado, planchado, galing. What impressed me about the plot is the transition between the second and third stories. Because um, after. The, the vampire vegetables incident parang baliwala na sa dalawa eh. uh, another case salt for Ronaldo so meron na naman siyang story na ilalagay sa chronicles niya what the plot made me realize also is this marami palang complications sa dynamic na to eh, between Ronaldo and Dralok of course Ronaldo has issues Dralok also has issues besides the uh, besides the uh, he constantly turns into ash whether he's either stressed out or uh, he gets hurt <laughs> stressed out palang lagi ano na siya lagi abone which, which is absolutely hilarious this goes to show you how much of a wimp Dralok is <laughs> so yeah it just maybe it's what the it's what made uh, it's what the plot made me realize just now yeah bilib ko sa plot so pace, flow and plot they all came together for this episode and I'm gonna be looking forward to more of these <laughs> so the vampire dies in no time episode 4 I'm trying to hold my laughter there so well, what can we expect for um, for this dynamic? More laughs, absolute laugh trip now. <laughs> you know, um, the vampire dies in no time uh, is really good at um, uh, mixing three, mixing uh, multiple stories into one episode. That uh, Madhouse has done a really swell job uh, for for this anime. Um, Kasi usually pag vampire anime, boring, uh, dragging, yeah, to, be, to be exact. Pero this particular vampire anime, nope. <laughs> Each uh, story, at least in this episode, it's an absolute laugh trip. Talaga. <laughs> Matatawa ka sa pagiging weak ni Dralok. Matatawa ka rin sa pagiging buffoon ni Ronaldo minsan. <laughs> So, well, we'll just have to wait for the next episode for more laughs. Um, uh, medyo matas na standards ko for this particular anime. Kaya, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to expect more from it. So, again, The Vampire Dies in No Time, Episode 4. This is about an, another mic drop, mga lifestyle. Next thing we have to do is the drill. We wait for next week.
and watch the next episode. Kaya, in the meantime, mga ka lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Uh, it's a day for uh, it's a day of R and R for for the entire team, okay? even their ex OC Leslie. Now, uh, while the rest of the team went shopping, si uh, siguro si naman si Larry dun sa kanyang shopping binge. Ang mga trip pa lang bilhin ni Larry yung mga black market na medical devices. So. Eh, siyempre, mga illegal to. Uh, well, after uh, after Larry made his shopping rounds, meron silang na-encounter na parang na tatlong na tatlong sangga, no? Na meron binubugbog na lalaki. So, well, nakaya lang sila. And they basically kicked their asses. <laughs> si Siguri lang. Hindi, uh, hindi umepal si Larry sa, sa gulo. Basta sinabi lang niya, o ito, itatapat, ito itatapat ko sa inyo. <laughs> Napasubo na si Sigur eh. Then, the guy that, uh, the guy they saved was actually an, uh, was an illegal drug dealer. Ang source pala niya ng illegal drugs, yung mga seeds at uh, products na galing mismo sa asylum. Yung mga, yung mga unknown yung mga halaman doon na hindi pa talaga na-explore ng science ito yung deal sa kanila actually it's just a favor pero tinake on ni tinake on na ni Larry without even without even consulting si Gure so again napasubo na naman si Sigure so pasok sila sa asylum illegally so hanap sila ng mga yung pinapahanap sa kanila They met this girl na hindi masyado nagsasalita na parang, yeah, parang parang pipi or so we thought then well, tinanong na lang ni Larry um, kaya ano ka pa sa ganito eh pinipigilan na siya ni Sigure to the surprise of both this girl led them to what they, uh, what they were looking for then all of a sudden a scarred Uh, started hunting them down. So, nagtatak, no, siyempre nagtatakbo sila, pero nakakuha naman sila ng, ano eh, ng, ng samples for the deal. Nadamay na rin yung girl, yung, yung bata. So, this card was hunting the three of them down. While all of this was happening, the rest of the team was now worried sick about them. So, of course, Ledley, Leslie, their, their XO, uh, led, the, led the search. Uh, they eventually found the three thugs na binugbog ni Sigure. Uh, siguro, uh, through Leslie's persuasion, nagsalita sila. This led to the drug dealer. Again, through Leslie's persuasion, nagsalita ni Sigure ito. Then, well, uh, while well, this was happening, uh, medyo... Nagkaroon ng debate between Larry and Shigure on who to serve as decoy para para tuloy nila masave si well the girl's name she eventually said was her name was Elsie I guess you've seen the you know you you've seen the proper spelling of her name ang talaga na nagpresenta na as decoy si Larry because uh yes uh to call this a thousand percent tolerance to pain kasi wala siya talaga nararamdaman na ano eh na, na pain so he's qualified to be a decoy but siguro said no yun ang hirap sa'yo something to this effect sinabi niya kay Larry ito ang hirap sa'yo you do not feel pain you don't know when to stop basically yun ang yun ang sinasabi nga ni ni, ni siguro sa kanya so I'll be the decoy Bigay mo sa akin yung ah uh, dito yung yung props ko. So, okay. Pumayag si Siguri na decoy. Sinun siyang sinundan ng scarred. Then, all of a sudden ayun. Ah, uh, nai 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 naitakasan ni 
ni Larry yung totoong LC. So, now, this card is targeting both of them. Kinorner sila. Who comes out to help? The rest of the team. So, they were able to fend off this, uh, this card and uh, take Larry and Shiguri with them. Of course, ni Reprimand, ni, uh, ni Leslie. Binigyan ng, binigyan ng tiki sa mag-asawang sampal. <laughs> Yung dalawa. Eh, sinabi na niya ni si Larry na, You do not feel pain, but others feel pain. You better realize that. So, you know, basically, yun, yun, yun ang pagkakareprimand niya kay, kay Larry. Eh, no, sinabi lang ni Sigure, it was all his idea. <laughs> talaga nilaglag niya. <laughs> nilaglag niya talaga si Larry at that moment. Final scene. What? Siguro na natauhan si Sigure sa sinabi ni Leslie na yun, uh, he went back to Commander Vera. Tinanggap na niya yung assassination job na pinapagawa na gustong ipagawa sa kanya. So, tinisit na ni Vera ang kanyang target. Si LC. Bakit? Let's break this episode down now, ARD stat. But, first, excuse me. Pace. Latter half of the episode, doon naging tense. Dahil, a scarred wants to uh, wants to have them for dinner. <laughs> Bottom line. So, uh, talaga magiging tense ang pacing. Bibilis ang, pipick up ngayon ang pacing. Natural. But, uh, overall, the pacing is It's quite good It's quite good Kasi If it weren't for the slow first half of the of this episode Hindi natin marirealize na Well Siguro Underpaid ang mga sleeper Kaya sila tumatanggap ng mga ganitong racket Outside of their Outside of their job Eh kahit, nga sa, eh kahit nga dito sa Pilipinas eh, may mga polis na ganyan eh. May mga, may, may mga government officials na ganyan eh. Sa anime pa kaya? The pacing will make you realize this. If a person is underpaid, he has the tendency to accept these kind of, uh, these kind of side hustles. Illegal yan man, illegal man yan o hindi. Basic human instinct over the past 400, 500 years or so. Kita nyo? Dinip dive ko. <laughs> Ganun kasi kaganda ang pacing ng episode na to. So, hindi siya mabilis na hindi naman kailangan. Hindi na siya mabagal na hindi naman kailangan. Flow naman. First gear shift here was of course when they, um, when they encountered these, uh, these bullies well, of course, Shiguri took care, took real good care of them. Okay, uh, they got their asses handed to them by Shiguri. You know what I'm ko. And what if it weren't for this gear shift, hindi natin malalaman yung ano eh, yung harsh reality ng anime na to. Tatanggap ba ng ganitong side hustle si si Larry out from out of the blue na na yun lang dahilan niya just for uh, just for just for the science of it. Ah ah, di ko naniniwala doon. More likely, like I said a while ago, sleepers are underpaid enough to 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 accept these kinds of um questionable side hustles. Through this gear shift na mula si Shigure sa realidad na to. And it's quite sad. Second gear shift was when what well, they crossed paths with Elsie for the first time. Why do they call this a gear shift? Simple lang. Where did this girl come from? In Asum Gagan Nilari na exile ito. Now, exiles are either refugees or dun na talaga nakatira sa asylum before it was even discovered. Dalawang bagay lang yun. Pero. There's more to this girl than meets the eye. That's what this gear shift is telling me. Kaya ko tinawag na gear shift. Final gear shift was that scene wherein 
Uh, kasi in, uh, in one scene in this episode, merong meron sa ating ipinakilalang politiko ni, uh, uh, who has an assistant named Hayden. Now, in the scene that I named a gear shift, merong kinausap si Hayden dito na uh, tinanong niya, you got, uh, you got found out? So, yan. Okay. Now, it really makes you wonder kung sino ang kausap niya over uh, over the phone. Hmm. Alalahan ninyo, alalay na politiko ito. Isang mapaglinlang na politiko. There's a good enough reason why I called it a gear shift. Dahil, uh, the, the, um, the asylum even attracts corrupt politicians. And the politician that uh, that was uh, that got introduced to us here in uh, in one scene of this episode, it's no different. He's no different. R- really makes you wonder. Cause he calls up the Hayden on over the phone. So these three gear shifts that I saw, I am 99.9% sure. These three gear shifts will play a role down the line in this anime, especially. The last one. Talaga gusto mong malaman. Sino ba itong... Sino ba... Sino ba kung sa'tang Hayden na to? Hmm. And... That scene got shown right after Shigure and Larry were rescued. Right after! Hmm. Makes you really want to speculate even more. Makes you want to deep dive even more. Talagang... Ah... Uh, Takaw deep dive ang gearship na to. So, plot-wise, malinis. The way I see it, you do not need to cinch in um, any side or backstory in this kind of an episode. Dahil, ang gist ng episode na to is very simple. Sleepers uh, accept these kinds of jobs outside of their missions. Go to supplement their income. Well, um, if you have a job as dangerous as this, tapos mababa lang ang isinisweldo mo, natural. It's basic, it, it has been basic, it has been uh, basic human instinct for, yeah, for the past 400 or 500 years na, na ganun talaga. If you're overworked and underpaid, may tendency kang uh, maghanap ng kahit na anong racket. No matter how dangerous or even illegal it is. That's what this plot will make you realize. Kung, kung hindi ganito kalinis yung plot, you would not, um, you would not um, feel sorry about the issues this, these sleepers are going through outside of their missions. So, pace, flow, and plot I almost did not distinguish. I almost wasn't able to distinguish the uh, the flow from the plot. Practically, any scene in this particular episode can be a gear shift. Pero uh, the way I see it, the three that I mentioned kanina, they will play a major role down the line in this anime. Kaya well, overall, it's a really it's another really good episode from this anime. So, Deep Insanity, The Lost Child, Episode 3. Oh, two thumbs up. The, uh, what you call this? The overall plot of this anime so far, it reminds me of, yeah, again, Evangelion. <laughs> Parang, halos ganito talaga yung... Yung na-encounter na issues um, What's call this? Yeah, issues ng mga lead characters doon Halos ganito They have um, What's call this? May, but, they're, but they're mostly psychological in nature Pero ito They gave a financial twist to it eh. Kasi eh, Dinivulge ni Larry dito Na May mga sleeper talaga na 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 merong ganitong racket. So, 
si siguro yung natural magtataka. Paano sila tatanggapan ganitong klaseng racket? Kailan naman nilang illegal to? It just makes you want to realize that sleepers are overworked and underpaid. Kaya sila tumatanggap ng kahit illegal na racket. Wow. True to life. <laughs> True to life, mga ka-lifestyle. That's what, this, that's, that's what this episode will make you realize overall. So again, Deep Insanity, The Lost Child, Episode 3. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up of this. Wow, great sci-fi anime, mga ka-lifestyle. So what do we do now? Simply lang. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. What does this anime have in store for us next week? Hmm. Ko gusto ko ng, deep dive. <laughs> but in the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Wedding, oh. This is practically um, the origin story of Tart, yung isang miembro ng yung isang pang miembro ng assassination team ni Lu. How he met her, how she, how he took her in. Then eventually, um, she's already in training for two years as an assassin. May napansin si Lu na mahina sa close combat si Tart basically. Pero, mahusay siya with a spear. Eh, a spear is not an assassination weapon of choice. So, ang ginawa ni, uh, ni Hugh ay ganito. Isang gabi, uh, naabutan niyang nag, uh, nagpa-practice si Tart in the secret training room. Okay. You don't enter the secret training room without uh, without itwat a desk permission. So, medyo nilabag medyo may nilabag na patakaran si si Tart Don right there and then. But Luke instantly forgave her kasi talagang she's hard at work. She wants to be uh, she wants to be the best assassin Luke has ever seen. Pero yun nga lang, ang problema nga lang niya mahina siya sa close combat. So, ang ginawa ni Luke ay ito. Right before her very eyes Luke created a weapon that is customized to her. It's a spear na pwedeng i-fold down to dagger size. Ano Combat knife size, basically. O, sabi ni Lou. Alright. Start practicing with this. Eh, oh, nagustuhan naman ni ano? Nagustuhan naman ni... Tawag dito? Ni... Ni Tart. Trip na trip niya yung weapon. So, they spent the whole night um... Uh, what you call this? Practicing with this new weapon of Tart. Eh, inabutan na nga sila ng gabi. So, well, Tart can be really lewd sometimes. Kasi, na, um, in one of their nights na talagang pinapractice niya yung spear, nauna nang, mag, nauna nang magpahinga si, si Lou. Then, uh, siguro, right after practice, dinala niya ng, ng herbal tea si Lou doon sa kwarto niya eh na, na, nakita, nakita niya natutulog nakitulog na rin siya <laughs> alright so uh, first thing in the morning what what she did to Lou was something unexpected by Lou uh, uh, she gave Lou a um, boob shot <laughs> inibig yung ulo doon sa boobs niya it was, a, it's, it was both an awkward and a funny moment. This, this is the first funny moment I have seen in this anime. Kaya, well, that was the final scene. Believe it or not, folks, that was the final scene. So, well, hindi na kamang papatupik-tupik pa. Let's break this episode down ARD style. I am so pumped at what I saw in the final scene. Pace! So, um, moderate yung pacing ng episode na to. Bakit? Because, nag-jump na siya by two years. Kasi, 
Oh, when the episode started, Lou was already 10 years old. So, we're going to assume now that Tart was also that age. Kasi mukhang, mukhang mag-edad lang sila. When uh, Lou rescued her from those pack of wolves. Did you see that scene? Wow! Grabe yung scene na yun! He downed an entire pack of wolves. Ma, maisad ba lang niya si, si Tart? Yung isa nga... Tinaga pa niya sa leg dito Ganun no Sinabi pa niya yung specific na Manner of death Spinal cord severed Instant death That was disturbing The, the way uh, The piece will also, will also make you realize this The way Lou Described how he was killing these wolves <laughs> Only a pacing uh, Only with that kind of a pacing Can you illustrate how disturbing it was Okay? So, wow! Grabe yung, uh, grabe yung, grabe yung kill scene na yun. If the pacing wasn't this moderate, hindi natin pa feel yung ano eh, yung, uh, yung gusto ng main protag on how OP this kid is. Eh, pino mo ba naman? Assassin na, Uh, magician pa. It's a deadly combination. And he is shown that in that scene. Yung sa, sa kill scene na yun. Wow! So, sabi ko sa inyo, mga kalaistan, if it weren't for this kind of a pacing, hindi natin na uh, may experience lang tuloy kung paano niya pinapatay ang mga, uh, ang mga lobong to. And how how much progress Stark has uh, has gone ever since Lou took her, took her in. So, wow. She's got the moves right now. And, you, you see, you seen how, you seen how sexy Tart is? Ooh! Hindi mo mapagkakamal ang assassin to. If you're, um, if you're, uh, if you're a dirty old man at ikaw ang target ni Tart, wala. Tumba ka na. <laughs> Maganda yung pagkakatrain sa kanya ni Lou so far in these two years that I've skipped. Yeah, that's what the pacing will also make you realize. Now, Luna man, first gear ship was when uh, Lou rescued um, Tart from those pack of wolves. Simple lang dahil lang ko mga kalaisa kung bakit ko tinawag na gear ship ito. Kasi, we got introduced to the second member of his assassination team. Kasi nung pilot, uh, pinakilala na sa atin yung apat eh Yan, si Lou si, Of course, si Dia, si Tart So um, Tart came in After Dia in, If you're going to see the chronological order of things That's what this gearship will also Will make you realize Kaya ako nang tinawag na gearship to Because, because It introduced us to A new member of Lou's Assassination team Second gearship was when uh, Lou re when Lou's aha moment when he was uh, when he was uh, when he was observing Tart from from his uh, from his window in his room. So he was observing Tart from that vantage point, and he had a and he had a, a, a sort of an aha moment right there. Para ma ma feel yung uh, yung training gap na pinapalabas ni Tart na nakikita naman niya so uh, it led now to the scene where in uh, in front of Tart he crafts uh, a weapon made just for her yung folding spear you know uh, don't be deceived by this anime folks a folding spear actually exists the Chinese developed this kind of a weapon. I know. Uh, I saw it on National Geographic. All right, and it is wow. It is brutal. You seen the first time Tart used it? Nung pagkabigay sa kanya ni ni Lu. It can actually also serve as a whip. Pwede niyang ga, pwede niyang pwede niyang magsilbing latigo ito to to catch opponents to to draw them near. 
thereby uh, increasing your chances of killing the killing the opponent. Kaya tatlong ano niya eh. Kung tutusin nyo, tatlong uh, it's a 3 in 1 weapon. A spear, a dagger, and a combat knife and a whip. You don't want to get tortured with this kind of a weapon because 90%, baka unang strike pa lang, patay ka na. <laughs> That's how deadly in real life this, uh, this such a weapon is. Kaya, pero, in this instance, talagang napag-isipan ni, ni Lu ito na bigyan si, si Tart ng ganitong klaseng weapon and train her with it. Wow! Right? That, what, that. Kaya, I consider it a gear shift. Final gear shift was when Tart received that weapon. So, wow. Why did I call this a gear shift? Simple lang. It's because of this gear shift that, um, that Tart had a character development moment. Kasi, okay, binigay sa kanya ni Lu. So, tinray, tinray niya kagad. Wow, swak na swak sa moves niya. Grabe. As if um, she is one with the weapon already. So, kaya nga, pinalakpakan siya ni Luna ganun eh. So, uh, Lu thought, oh, I made the right move here. I made the right decision here. Giving her this kind of a weapon. And she can handle it pretty well. So, pero, of course, um, uh, Luz at Watade. Mga mitikulo, mga mitikuloso mga to even even in killing people. Siguro sabi niya kay Kitart, "Oh Tart, nge. Yeah. I'll allow you to start I'll allow you now to start practicing with this weapon and this weapon alone." Ginanan tuloy yung babae. Yeah. It's a no brainer of a gear shift kasi character development yung pinag-uusapan eh. So does Lou now have a have a certified has a certified member on his assassination team? Mm. 100% because of that gear shift. So these three gear shifts that I saw, all of them will have a role down the line in this anime. You know feeling ko. Plot wise. Kagit nag skip ng dalawang taon. Diren planchado plot. Hindi ko matawag na malinis eh. Bakit? 40 years ago, before uh, before uh, recruiting Lu, may nirecruit nung araw si Ahem na ganito rin, pero uh, sundalo. And uh, quite a lewd one at that. Okay. So, I need you to kill the hero in, in, this, amount, in this amount of time. So, in, so, after 40 years, Kino ay ano eh, uh, meron siyang kino na crystal to see the progress of that person. Kasi reincarnated din siya tulad ni Lu. Eh, he grew up to be a fat slob. Ta tapos ang sabi pa niya, eh, narinig din ni, ni Ahem. Okay, sige. Kaya sige, another tomorrow na. Ayoko muna. Kaya siguro na Ahem, putang ina ka. May bibigyan kita ng trabaho hanggang hindi mo pa ginagawa. Well, the plot will make you realize that Lou wasn't the only one that uh, that I have recruited to kill the hero. Yung nauna sa kanya, <laughs> failure. Kaya pala siya nirecruit. So, if we didn't have this kind of an an iron out plot, hindi natin marirealize kung ano eh, yung mindset ni Ahem nung ni-recruit niya si Lu. Kaya pala. <laughs> now, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Kasi, kung niisipin nyo, Lu is not the only great assassin out there eh. Bakit siya pa? Bakit siya ang sinigil out ni ni uh, ni ni Ahem? Kasi nga, mitikulo, mitikuloso siya. And, once you give him a job, he sees it through. That's why he's one of the he is the world's finest assassin. So, 
He gets the job done. Okay? Yung, mayari, ikaw ang principal niya. Yung ibabayan mo sa kanya talagang sulit. He, he also has that tendency to over-deliver. Kaya, kaya pala. Yung nauna sa kanya, lazy as fuck. I, I, I can't blame him for this. You can't blame the girl. So, pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode. And wow, giving us another... Uh, you wouldn't... You would not um, tell that this is all part of one huge backstory. Sa ganda ng pagkaka... Pagkakakwento, eh, hindi ka makakaisip ng ganun eh. You won't be able to think that way. Kaya... It's a, it's a great episode. So, ang Satsu Kizoku, episode 4? Isip, ang ganda nga eh. Ang sexy ni... Ang sexy pa rin ni Tart? Oh! <laughs> Do it, Kanja! No, wait. Well, if you look at Lu's team right now, he has the world's most powerful magician in that world, of course, and a certified femme fatale in Tart. Ilang sexy. Tapos, marunong pa pumatay. <laughs> if you are a corrupt diplomat, you're gonna think twice about uh, about mingling with this kind of a girl. Abay eh. Baka, pwede mo lang pag-inala eh. Baka, baka, pati, baka itumba ako nito ah. Mukhang, mukhang hindi ko pagkakatiwalaan to ah. So, his assassination, Lou's assassination team is slowly taking shape na with the addition of Tart. So, mukhang nadya-justify na ang nangyari sa pilot sa opening, the, 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 first, the first few sequences at least. So, nadya-justify na yun. Kaya, it's forgivable now. It's forgivable. So, again, on Satsu Kizoku, episode 4, two thumbs up. Let's do the drill. We will wait for next week and watch the next episode. Kaya, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Dalawang story lang ngayon, actually. Pero kung... Well, let's run it down, okay? First story. Um, someone... Thinks she's in competition with Komi. You wish. <laughs> her name is Yadano. Yadano Makeru. Well, but uh, her classmates call her Yadano. Simply by her last name. And what? She always gets in this um this fantasy contest with Komi. Um. Every time their uh, their annual physical exam comes up. Because in Japan, ganun yata sila. Uh, merong annual physical ang lahat ng mga estudyante. I think it's mandated by uh, it's mandated by law there. So ang mini measure uh, vision dante. Weight, standing height at sitting height. Uh, parang parang particular measurements to for students eh. After the all the after all the measurements have been done. Okay, so Sabi ni Yadano sa sarili niya. Okay, Komi, let's have a battle. <laughs> eh, tinignan yung score. It's a tie. Well, Yadano has this bad attitude of losing. When she loses. Okay, she hates losing, pero she has a really disturbing way of exhibiting this. Nahuli siya minsan ni, ni Tadano. Uh, when she was a... Uh, uh, looking intently at um, at the cop at the school nurse uh, examining Komi. Wow, talaga, that disturbing. <laughs> Eventually, it was a tie, according to her. Komi is far, far more physically superior than you. Hello, <laughs> and you think it's a tie? <laughs> you're, you're delusional. In the second story, we get to meet finally the one who um 
uh, during the pilot, yung babaeng nag-threaten kay Tada na na kung na kung, uh, na kung lalapit siya kay Komi, papatayin siya. Well, she lived up to her word. Her name is Ren. So one day, uh, Tada was on his way to school. May kumidnap sa kanya. Then, in his place, suddenly, is Ren. So, while they were, she was um, walking her way to school, nakita niya, uh, nakasabay niya si Komi. And, uh, you know what she said in her head? I'm in love. <laughs> okay. There's a, um, what you call this? There's, there's an accompanying story to that. Yung kanyang, uh, severe infatuation. Yeah, you can say that. She doesn't want anyone near Komi at hanggat uh, hindi pa siya nagpapakilala kay Komi, huwag muna makilala mang iba. So, nung bumat, nung bumat in si Najimi, syempre kaibigan ni Komi to, she has every right to bat in. Well, uh, kinausap muna siya ni Ren. And Ren threatened Najimi to, uh, sabi niya, ipakilala mo kay Komi, kung di, may kalalagyan ka. Oh, so may gusto mo sige, sige. So, may buhay mo na si Mad. Kumain naman si Najimi. Pinakilala niya kay pinakilala niya kay Komi si Ren. And um now Ren has the goal to to sit beside Komi. Doon sa doon sa doon sa mismong desk ni Tadano, 'di ba? Yung seating arrangement nila kasi si Komi at si Tadano magkatabi talaga. That's according to the seating arrangement. Eh, nagtataka si Najimi kung bakit Hanggang ngayon, hindi pa pumapasok si Tadano. Eh, yun pala, nakatali sa isang kwarto si Tadano, puro pictures ni Komi and ni Ren. So, uh, he has now safely assumed that Ren was the one who kidnapped him. <laughs> at doon sa, tina, at sa kinulong sa mismong kwarto ni, ni Ren. I don't know what... Now, Jimmy suddenly suggested to Ren na kung pwede, kung pwede ba kami dumalaw ni Komi sa bahay nyo. Siyempre, nanonin niya na sasama si Komi. Instant, pumayag. Alright. So, pero, na, nauna, nauna na siyang umuwi para ayusin yung kwarto niya. She hit that, ano, uh, inside her closet at pinagtatanggal lahat ng, pinag, pinagtatanggal niya lahat ng pictures niya of Komi and her. So, wow, talaga pa. Nandun na sa kwarto sila Komi at si Najimi. Pero, um, gulo ng gulo si Tadolo from, from the closet. Siyempre, eh, napapasak lolo. Eh ngayon, sina, sinabi ni, o tinanong ni Ren kila, kila Najimi na kung baka gusto nilang gusto nilang magtsaa muna maghahanda muna siya ng tsaa sa, eh, sabi naman ni Najimi yup sige ngayon pagka labas sa pagkalabas ni Ren ayun hmm nakialam na si Najimi binuksan yung pinto ng closet ayun nakita si Tada no so nilabas sila nilabas sila ni Komi ni si Tada no at nahuli sila ni Ren and well ah uh, Ren just spilled the beans on Why she kidnapped Tadano? It's because she doesn't want um, any loser like Tadano to be near Komi. Hmm. Ako ano 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 In the end, tinanggal nila na Jimmy and Komi yung pagkakatali ni ano ni ni Tadano sa Sicilia. So, he, he's now he's now free. Well, sa, sinabi na lang ni Komi kay kay Ren. I choose the friend. Come here, Mel. Something to respect. I choose my own friends. Walk out sila ng tatlo. The next day, nag-usap sila ni ano. Nag-usap sila ni nag-usap sila Komi at Tadano. And but sinabi ni tinanong ni Komi kay Tadano that do you still want to be friends with me? Uh, knowing what because what happened to you sabi, what happened to you was uh, yesterday was terrible dahil sa akin yun and what sinabi naman ni 
Tado no... Inulit lang actually ni Tado yung sinabi ni... ni Komi kay Ren uh, that day. I choose my own friends. So, uh, after that, uh, nag-apologize din si Komi and... Oh, Tadalo was about to say, you don't know, what, what are you apologizing for? So, biglang butt in si Nazimi with Ren. Eh, gusto pa lang mag-apologize si Ren kay Tadano. Ngayon, salud nga lang ni Tadano. Tangin na mo, tinalim, kinidnap mo ko, hayop ka eh. Dahil lamang kay Komi. So, pero then, um, kinusulta naman niya si Komi, and Komi said it's okay. Pumayin na rin si Tadano na uh, i-apologize to, and siguro, I, isama na sa grupo nila kasi kasi at that point hindi pa naiintindihan ni Ren yung kaso ni Komi so inexplain inexplain nila na Jimmy at, at Tadalo sa kanya give, give, probably, yeah, probably give her the full the full explainer on it so uh, alam na niya so may communication disorder ang ang pinakamagandang babae sa school nila. And, her goal is to make 100 friends. So, sabi ni Ren, sige, tulong ako. Ngayon, uh, I don't know if you can call this a post-fed, if you, if you can uh, include this in the final. Pero, sinabi niya kita, ano, that if she come, that he, he comes near Komi, she will bury him. Pero, ano pa, ano? Apologize mo lang, walang yaka. So, wow. It's another hilarious episode. Let's break that down, ARD style. Okay? Face! Well, um, despite the, uh, despite the exaggerations, the, the usual exaggerations of this anime, slow, the, uh, the pacing was moderate. Pero, gets mo pa rin yung funny moments because of the exaggerations. So, yun, yun na nagko-compensate sa pacing, yung, uh, yung sudden exaggerations sequences ng, ano, ng, ng anime na to. Ano, ng, ng episode na to. So, I got no complaints with the, uh, with the pacing. Talagang tama, tama lang. The only time that the pacing picked up was when uh, that scene where in, uh, talaga pinakitisitada no na nakatali sa silya, naka, naka, naka duct tape yung bunga. <laughs> talagang, uh, talagang someone, someone kidnapped him. Talagang may, may dumukot sa kanya. Talata, talata. And in a room where there's lots of pictures of Komi that probably the, it's the first time he's seen this. So, so talagang inasume na na ang kumidnap sa kanya stalker ni Komi. Eh, nakita niya, may, may mga pictures din ni, ni Ren na parang, na parang hahalikan si Komi ganon, or parang nakaganon. So, y- y- even, as the, even as the viewer, you can simply deduce that Ren is a stalker. <laughs> it's, it's the handiwork of a stalker. Bottom line. <laughs> but, Due to the exaggerations uh, in this uh, in this episode, okay lang yung ganitong pacing because na emphasize it, na emphasize siya. Now, if you're not going to emphasize a scene, you might as well pick the pace up para umano yung para magets kagad ng viewer na comic moment ito. I got no complaints with the, uh, when it comes to the pacing. Blow na man. Hmm. Biggest gear shift I saw in the first story was yung yung reveal ni ni Yada no na nilagyan niya yung yung school nurse sila para dayain yung ano yung resulta ni Komi. Why did I call that a gear shift? Alalahanin niyo, right? If you're well, if yeah, this also this even happens to guys also. Eh. If you're the most beautiful being in school, there will be admirers 
and there will also be um uh there will also be enemies. Okay, Yadono is that sort of an enemy. Uh you can call it uh Envy, Ingit, Wede. Because she sees coming as competition. Tiga sa buka, no? Compe Ikaw competition kay Komi. Ulun! <laughs> you're not, you're, you're, your hair is not even... Your face is not as even beautiful as your hair. <laughs> oh, grabe. And that's what this gearship will make you realize it. Eh. Uh, if you haven't gone through high school yet, well, I'm sure... Most of uh, the view, most of most of you watching this anime are have have uh, are either still in school or have graduated from school, and you can you can probably relate to this gear shift. Second, well, uh, teka. Okay, biggest gear shift from the second story was yung uh, pagkaka discover nila ano nila Najime at Komi kay Tadano talaga nakatali sa silya nakatago dun sa closet why did I call this a gear shift? no brainer folks through Tadano's plight nakita nila Najime and Komi have therefore deduced that this girl is a psycho <laughs> we do not want this in our inner circle ah ah noong una ayaw ni Komi Ayaw ni Komi talaga. This gearship is also telling us that, uh, well, Komi may have a communication disorder, but she's not dumb. Okay, hindi BBD ito si Komi. She, yeah, she is smart enough to know which people to trust and which people should be included in her inner circle. So, right now, so far, si Tadano, si Najimi, at saka yung, 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 isang, yung isang girl na may salamin. Pero ang talagang closest confidence niya ngayon ay si Tadano at si Najimi. You, you can tell by the, look, by the look of disappointment on Komi's face nung sinabi ni Ren na, I did this for you. Kasi, kasi loser nung si Tadano. Ano, ano ka ba? You, you shouldn't mingle with these kinds of people. So, ikaw ni Komi, who are you to tell me that? Ito, kasi, oh, uh, ikasiguro ni Komi Itong gandang ito Ha? Mag ma ma magpapaka Magpapaka Tawag dito? Magpapaka plastic sa isang Sa isang siraulong katulad mo <laughs> So just goes to show you how smart Komi is When it comes to um, When it comes to well, Making friends Probably because of uh, The group of friends she has now Yan nga, si Tadano at si Najimi She has learned to uh, to discern people. Kaya we can say na positive in influence si Najimi at si Tadano sa kanya. Kaya these two gear shifts that I saw the second one will play a role down the line in this anime. We really want to see how sincere Ren's apology is. Kasi, nag-sorry nag -sorry sa kitada, no? And, um, Komi thinks it's okay to to forgive her. Siyempre, uh, pakinggan naman siya ni Tada, no? Plot-wise! Planchado. Because, um, hindi ako... Well, ito lang yung... Believe it or not, may complaint ako sa episode na to, guys. Hindi ako masyadong convinced sa transitioning between the stories. Because um, the second story is totally unrelated to the first one, or I couldn't see any connection. Because if you're going to present multiple stories in an episode, kailangan smooth yung transition eh, para yung focus ng audience hindi mawala. And you can easily fool beginning anime fans that this is uh, one continuous story. Because several animes have done that before. So does it work? Uh, and right now, the vampire dies in no time. Hmm. Maganda mag transition ng stories yung anime na yan. So far, huh? in uh, in my review, in my in my review of it so far. Pero tito, hindi ko mabagkakamal ng malinis ang plot. Kasi talagang uh, talagang well ironed out lang ang plot na to. 
Kasi, yung transitioning ng... Uh, between the first and the second story, pronounced eh. Pronounced na talagang dalawang magkay- magkaibang storya to. There's... Um, OLM did not uh, present any connection between the two. Talagang these are two different stories. But, it's a well-ironed out plot. Kumbaga, um, yung there was a sort of a calm before the storm. Eh. Ang calm dito yung unang story. Ah. Ang storm yun, yung pangalawa na. But that, that, was, that was the good thing. Something as um, trivial as Yadanos uh, competitive nature against Komi. Yeah. <laughs> you can call that trivial. So, face, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, giving us another great one. Ang talaga nagdala dito yung pangalamang storya. Because we now, we, we now, uh, we are, we have been, in, take two. We have been introduced to a new member of Comics Inner Circle, si Ren. But, power tip, we should not trust her yet. Dahil, well, yan dere yung babaeng to eh. Sabi nyo ba naman, ka-apologize lang niya. She threatens Tadano again. Hey, eh, this is a yander eh. eh. At work, so, wag, wag nyo muna pagkatiwalaan to for Komi. So, Komi can communicate episode 4? Deserve. Two thumbs up! Ngayon lang yan talag dalawang story ang ano eh. Uh, ang, ang anime na to Kasi in the first three episodes It's, it's either three or four eh. Pero dito dalawa lang But OLM did uh, Made the right call here Na ginawa lang nilang dalawang storya Because yung pangalawa They really had to Introduce uh, The newest member to Komi's, in, Komi's Inner Circle Ayun nga si Ren So how she um, How she got in and how she how she pissed off the group yeah <laughs> by kidnapping Tada no yeah, may pissed off lahat pissed off lahat yun lahat si Komi <laughs> although she although she can't communicate that well pa <laughs> you can see the, you can see the look of disappointment on her face <laughs> although although cute yeah it's a disappointed look <laughs> so power tips for the next episode if ever do not trust Ren yet. And number two, um, sana wag ano, sana wag bumitaw si Komi kay Tadano. But, uh, knowing Tadano's persistence, yung ano, uh, talagang, talagang committed siya to, to help Komi out eh, in her goal of making 100 friends. So, uh, sigurado hindi bibitaw. Ba- baka ang unang bumitaw pa nga rito si Komi. <laughs> but, pero sana wag. Sana wag. Uh, yung dynamic nila eh, talagang napaka-interesante. I'd love to see that dynamic again in the next episode. So again, Call Me Can Communicate, episode 4. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great local anime, mga lifestyle. This anime is getting hyped already. But, uh, I heard... It has been uh, is that, it has been somewhat hyped before it aired. If that's the case, it's the real deal. So, what are we going to do now, mga kalaistas? Simple lang. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Can't wait. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Pick up where we left off. Ito pa lang si um, uh, Metro Blue and Metro Yellow. Yeah, they're two. They two are god candidates. Pero uh, they can only shoot uh, red arrows. May wings din sila. So mga ano lang yan, mga mga angels sila in first rank. They saw through Metropolitan's plan. Hindi ito yung Metropolitan sa field. Yung mismo Metropolitan ay nagtatago somewhere. So, big na tapos biglang may lumabas na isa pang God Candidate, bata. 
who only has wings. So, wala rin siyang arrows. Kumbaga, her angel is probably second rank. So, okay, sige. Uh, nagmamakawa nga siya na sumali kila Metro Blue and Yellow eh. Uh, okay, sige. If you'll only allow us to shoot you a red arrow. So, uh, Pumayag naman yung bata. Then all of a sudden, the real Metro Polyman appears. Kinuha yung bata. Siya ang nag-shoot ng red arrow sa bata. So, it's now under her con it's now under his control for the next for the next 33 days. So, while all of this was happening, Saki and Mirai were watching. Eventually, the real Metro Polyman kills both um Metro Blue and Metro Yellow. Tapos, meron pa siyang kinonchabang dalawa pang ano, dalawa pang dalawang tao to dress as Metro Green and Metro Pink. Kumaga, uh, siguro nanghula nang siya na na meron din mga god candidate na na magsusot ng, ng ganitong costume katulad ng sa kanya. Although, not similar. Hindi niya ito kinontrol ng, ng Red Arrow itong dalawang poser na to. He only controlled it with money. Corrupt son of a bitch. Si Metro Yellow kasi, kinontrol niya muna with a red arrow. Then, pinosasan sinang dalawa ni ng, ng bata. Uh, he mercilessly played with these two. Una niya pinatay, of course, si Metro Yellow. Then, as he was about to to target the kid, uh, talaga nagmamakaawa na yung bata na huwag siyang patayin. Uh, Saki was already... No, by the way, this is already the final scene. Saki was already pleading with Mirai to, to to make it stop. Well, all of a sudden, biglang lumabas yung, yung ring dito ni Mirai. Yep, he is ready to attack. Talaga, di, di na rin niya matiis eh, yung kalupitan ni Metro Polyman. What is going to happen in the next episode? Woo! <laughs> So let's break this episode down ARD style, mga kalaista. Pace, from the get-go, tense na ang pace ng episode. Talagang, I tell you, this is one tough-to-watch episode. Lalo na nung kinuha ni Metro Polyman yung, yung batang god candidate. And made, and made, him, his, made him his own slave. Yung peking Metro Polyman, ginamitan din ni Metro Polyman yun ng, ng Red Arrow. Para, para, para sumunod sana niya. So ang ginawa niya dun, this is what the pacing will will uh will make you see. He dressed it up as himself. Tapos from from the air binagsak niya. Sa sobrang bilis, i, 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 hindi siya nakita ng mga tao. But uh while all of this was going on, Mirai thought, I can fly as fast as that. Pero ayoko muna ipakita pagka god candidate ko. Kay, kay kami ni Saki. But, wow. The, why did I say that uh, there's a tense pacing? It is, uh, the latter half of the episode also became slow and excruciating. Sabi ko sa inyo mga kalaysa, this is one tough to watch episode. Dahil lang kay Metropoliman. Kay Metropoliman. Pinakita ni Metropoliman dito kung gano'n siya kakontrabida. Talagang, this episode, through the pacing, pa lang, it is now confirmed that Metropoliman is the true enemy here. Siya ang true villain dito. So, what? Hindi nyo rin masasisi si Mirai na 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 maganda para gumante in the final scene. Uh, Flo naman. Well, first gear she was when the kid god candidate appeared. Kasi, basta lang siya... Uh, basta lang lang siya lumitaw eh. And everyone was in shock kung paano lumilipad ang batang to. Well, normal humans cannot see wings. So, talagang tatang siya. Uy! Kung may lumilipad ang bata, ano yun? So, bakit ko tinawag ng gear shift to? Well, if it weren't for this gear shift, hindi lalabas ang totoong Metropoliman. Dahil kung sila metro blue at metro yellow lang wala makokorner siya ng dalawang to kasi well thought out yung counter attack nila kay metro polyman they were prepared to 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 go to war to go to war against this guy 
Talagang pinaghandaan nila. Halata eh. That, that's what this gives you will make you will make you see and understand. And it will also uh, make you realize that Metropoliman is one big you son of a bitch. And just imagine if he is already God. Wala! Sabi nga ni Metro Yellow. Pag ito, pag ito naging Diyos, wala. Patay tayong... Wala. Ubus tayong lahat. Tao man o anghel. Second gearship was when Metropoliman kills Metro Blue. Bakit ko tinawag na gearship? Simple lang ang rason ko. Umpisa na ang pagkasik ng lagim ni Metropoliman. Right there and then, pinakita na niya sa mga tao kung gaano kasama kung gaano siya kasama right there okay simply put metropoliman started his villainy with him killing Met metro blue simple lang yon final gear shift was what well, consider this the tipping point for mirai when um the kid god candidate is uh, is trying to escape metropoliman And while uh, her angel is trying to stop all of this, talagang, wow, that that particular scene was really tough to watch. Biro nyo, nakaposa siya sa railing. Yung other, yung isang posa sa niya, nakadikit kay, kay Metro Yelo, napatay na. So talagang extra bigat yun pareho. And for a kid to just fly out like that, it's not that easy. Dugo na nga yung dito niya yung isang reach niya sa kapit, kapit piglas talagang it was really tough to watch well simple lang kung bago tinawag na gear shift ito it's the tipping point for Mirai tapos uh, nagmamakaawa pa si Saki sa kanya na, na, tu, na tulungan yung bata well how the final scene ended ayun dumabas yung ring niya rito he's ready to he's ready to attack na So these three gearships that I saw, nah, all of them will play a role down the line in this anime, if not the next episode. Jill, how much I say? Go. Plot wise, malinis. If you're an animation studio and you really want to um, make this a uh, a tough to watch episode for the viewers, kailangan ng ganito kalinis yung plot. You don't have to, uh, kasi kung, kung lalagyan nyo ng side story or back story to, sira eh. Sira yung continuity. Sira yung continuity ng episode. So, in order to elicit um, feelings of hate, sadness, anger, you need a plot this clean. All top to watch episodes have a plot this clean. To tell you the truth. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. Talagang, one of the toughest to watch episodes I have seen so far this anime season. Talagang, wow! Nakaawa yung bata. And uh, it's about time na tumulong na si Mirai. Talagang, nagmamalabit sa rito si, ano eh, si, si Metropoliman. So, Platinum and Episode 5 Take off So Platinum end Episode 4 Isip pa Ang ganda ng episode Top to watch nga eh Oh <laughs> So tanggap What's gonna happen now In the next episode Well More often than Well more likely Gaganti na si Mirai Yun ang Yun ang Yun ang bottom line dito So What do we do now Let's wait for the next episode Talagang, uh, I got few words to say for this for this episode. Talaga, it was really tough to watch, but it's a really good one. Okay? Kasi, if it ain't tough to watch, it ain't a good if it ain't, it ain't a good episode, iba mga kalay style. So again, platinum end episode four. Two thumbs up. We just have to do the drill, mga ka lifestyle. We wait for next week and watch the next episode we're in. Well, I really want to see how 
how Mirai is going to make a move here. Kaya, enjoy the other reviews in this digest for a while, mga lifestyle. We picked up where we left off with uh, from uh, the previous episode. So, binigyan na talaga ni ni Rion ang kiyohon nut kay kay Toa which became a float. It's known as the Star Slicer float. So, eh, ang tanong ni Toa, paano ko magagamit to? Eh, sinabi na ng Rion, well, you get to understand it when you play it. Something to that effect. Then, uh, kumbaga, may balak humiwalay ang kaluluwa ni Rio kasi yung kumakosa sa kanila at that, uh, in that episode, kaluluwa na lang pala yun. The body has been encased by Kirin Maru himself in, uh, in a statue made of her own bones at saka grave soil. And it has been that way for the past 600 years. So, nalandaman ni Kirin Maru yun, ikilulong ang kaluluwa ni Rion doon sa statuette na yun. But, Rion will now have none of that. Ayaw na niya talaga. Gusto niya talaga lumaya na. From out of the blue, she becomes solid as a human. So, well, technically, Rion is, uh, is back from the grave. And well, through the um, through the Star Slicer flute, ginamit niya para mawala na yung barrier. Tuluyan na nawala yung barrier. Pero meron palang what you call this uh, precautionary measure pala si Kirin Maru just in case this happens. All the demon energy that is left from from the barrier magiging isang uh, magiging isang spirit beast dito. Yun, ang sumagot pa sa yun ang sumagot pa sa tatlo. So they, well, tumakasa sila kasama si Rion. And uh, Rion just told Toa to, to use the flute. So ginamit niya. It, beca- it became the Zansiken. Wow, one of the two legendary swords na na iniwan ng, ng, ng Star of, ng God of Stars. One of them is the Bakosiken, which Kar- Kirin Maru now holds. It's one of the swords Kirin Maru uses now. So, with the with the Zansiken, Toa takes out the spirit beast all by herself. In one go lang. <laughs> Mukha mas malakas ba ito? Wow. Talk about extermination. So, uh, they successfully left the mountain. While they were at it, Riku was uh, was at the uh, was at the foot of the mountain, uh, making sure no one interferes. So he 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 took out almost probably every uh, every small fry demon that has been living around that mountain. Bundok ngay nagyari. So yun, uh, nakita na si, nakita siya ng 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 tatlong bida and uh, nakita niya si Rion so well, they were reunited and ayun eh, sinabi niya yung sikreto niya kila kila Towa sabi pa na ni sabi nga ni Towa ah ganon ah she grabs Riku by the face and starts and starts jawing at Riku's face hoping that Kirin Maru will even listen. Ayun nga, ayun. Uh, sabi ni Toa, something to this effect. Hoy, Kirin Maru! Kung, kung, may problema, kung may problema ka sa paglaya ni Rion, eto kami. Alam mo kung saan kami hahanapin. <laughs> she, she, she actually jawed at, yeah, proverbially jawing at Kirin Maru to, 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 to come get them. Talaga, talaga, hinamon niya. Wow. <laughs> Final scene. Kinukup na technically ni Riku si Rion. And uh, well, basically uh mauuna na sila. And right after that, nakaramdam na ng tulog si Setsuna. First time in her life. Bakit? Because uh, moments before this, nakipagkita sa kanila si Seshomaru. And Uh, dinanong niya kay Setsuna kung 
na master na niya ang yukari ng tachikiri. Eh, sabi ni Setsu na, I'm not even halfway there. So, well, binunot na ni ni Sashomaru ang kanyang tensaiga. Pinatay niya ang dream butterfly sa loob ng katawan ng kanak niya. Every one tie that, uh, that keeps that keeps their mother uh, from getting infected by the silver by the silver skin curse. So, why did why did Sashomaru do that? Well, he just wants his daughter to get some sleep. Pero sinabi rin niya, the time for that is not now. Sashomaru is a man of few words. So, yeah. But let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace. The moment um, Rion decided to free herself from from uh, from her father's shackles. Ananan niyo anak ni Kirin Maruto, who has been who, whose soul has been imprisoned by uh, by Kirin Maru himself for the past 600 years. Hindi na katawid sa kamilang buhay to. And that's what all she wanted for the past 600 years. Ayo, ayo siyang ilet ko ng kanyang tatay. This is what the pacing will make you realize. It will make you realize how how overprotective a father Kirin Maru is. Ever since that uh, that moment, naging tense na ang pacing. That's for the uh, for the middle half of the episode. Ganon. Ganong attention pacing. But, who's complaining? Ako? <laughs> I ain't complaining. No complaints about the pacing. Swak na swak lang. And because, uh, the pacing will make you realize that Toa has a new weapon. Na, na nakuha na nilang Kyoyokon root. And it actually turned into a weapon for Toa. The, the, the sun seeking. Sabi nga ni Rion, Ngayon, may pag-asa na tayong mapatay natin ang ama, ang ama ko. <laughs> she really wants her father to die. Wow. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was when Rion uh, actually uh, tried to free, her, free herself from from that uh, from that spell uh, Kirin Maru placed on her for the past 600 years Bakit ko tinawag na gear shift? No brainer mga ka lifestyle Here you are Si Kirin Maru You have a daughter Rion who needs to go to the afterlife afterlife kasi nak pinakita dito na hindi matanggap ni ni Kirin Maru ang kamatayan ng anak niya so what did he do encase her in a in an egg with this uh statuette made of made of her made from her bones basically and imprison her on Mount Musubi for the next 600 years Yung bang gawain ng isang ama? I don't think so. That's what this gearship will make you realize. How, yeah, how cruel a father Kirimaru turned out to be. Kaya, hindi na ako nagtaka kung kung bakit ang sarili niya anak gusto siyang mamatay. Kirimaru didn't follow the flow of things. Final, ang sinunod lang niya rito, yung uh, yung kanyang pagiging sarili yung kanyang pagiging ama which is well on the wrong side he, he was on the wrong side of being a father bottom line second gear shift was when Toa received the weapon that can possibly kill Kirin Maru the sun seeking so baka malakas to character development gear shift I should ask I should say Kaya ako tinawag na gear shift. Final gear shift was... Strangely enough, the final scene. Finally! After... After so many years, Toa gets some... Ane, Setsuna gets some sleep. Eh, sino? Well, tinulungan na siya ng tatay niya, si Sashomaru. 
uh, by killing the dream butterfly na nasa loob ng katawan niya. Hindi ka nga siguro ni Sesyong Maro. Maraming pakimpigan sa kakainin bago nyo, bago nyo tuloy ang mapatay si Kiri Maro. You better start training now. Sabi niya. Siguro that's it. Uh, siguro that's it. That was his point. May tin lang, well, uh, it's due to this gear shift that, um, uh, made me go back to that moment when, uh, si Shumaru asked Moro, ha, kung nakipagkita na siya ng ama niya. Eh, tanong ni Moro, ha, paano mo nalaman yun? Well, mali sa resesyon, si Shumaru. He's a man of few words. So, it's up for Moro, ha, now to figure that out. Figure that one out. Excuse me. So these three gear shifts that I saw, the last um, two, can, especially the last one, can, well, the last one can be considered a character development gear shift. Because for the first time, sa talambuan niya, makakatulong na si Setsu na. So these, uh, the final, the last two gear shifts will play a role down the line in season two. Tagal sa pato yan. Plot-wise, despite uh, a backstory sequence by uh, coming from Rion, malinis ang plot. Kasi, um, let's just say na napali wala ang backstory sequence dito. The main continuity of this episode made us realize that uh, probably two of the biggest character development moments in this anime Setsuna finally gets some sleep and Toa receives a new weapon a weapon crafted by a demon si Rion alalakali nyo uh, Rion is a demon courtesy of her father si Kirin Maru so kaya malakas na weapon itong Sansiken and of course it was initially crafted by the, by the God of Stars if the pacing weren't this clean, hindi natin ma appreciate yung yung character development na na naranasan nila ng ng magkapatid dito. Hindi natin ma appreciate yon, and we wouldn't actually cheer for Toa taking out this 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 vicious spirit beast all by herself using the new weapon, ang Sansigen. Grabe. Kung iron out ng plot na to. Wala eh. Yung magic ng character development, hindi, hindi natin may experience. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. Actually, maraming gear shift ang episode na to. I just had to cite uh, three for my own personal satisfaction. So, ganyang kaganda ang episode na to. So, Yasha Himi the second act. Episode 5 So what happens next? Of course, Painga Muna <laughs> Painga Muna yung tatlo kasi They've been uh, They've been uh, it, it was a long uh, Four episode journey for them Kasi Hinahanapan nila itong Hinahanapan nila itong Itong map Usubi na to At saka yung si Ano Si Ano may pangalan Ayun Si Bokusino So uh, Personally I feel happy for Toa Dahil Finally She gets to wield A weapon Crafted by demons Kasi yun ang talagang Power tip sa kanila Ni uh, Ni Toto Sai Toa should not wield a weapon crafted by humans. Kasi nga, half demon siya. So, hindi may lalabas yung, yung tunay ng lakas kung ang gamit ng sandata e eh, gawa sa tao. Wala. Well, in the pilot, agree naman si Setsu na doon. So, talaga you feel happy for Toa now. Now that she has the means of possibly taking out Kirimaru all by herself. Pwede. Pwede mangyari yun, mga ka-lifestyle. And it would be a very satisfying moment if she herself kills Kirin Maru. 
So again, Yashahim in the second act, episode 5, deserves another mic drop. So what do we do now, mga lifestyle? Kailan pa bang i-memorize yan? We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Kaya, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this time. Shin's prediction uh, has come true. The Legion has launched an all-out attack on all its enemies. The uh, uh, Alliance of Wald, uh, Robo Garcia, San Magnolia, and also and of course the Jab Federacy. They, they launch attacks in all directions. So, nagmobilize agad ang Nordic Squadron, yung pinamumuno ni Shin. What, what, of course, which composed of former 86. Nagtaka na si yung Colonel na nandala na sila. So, sinabi naman ni Shin, we didn't, we didn't ask for your permission to prepare, but save the lectures for later. Give us authorization. <laughs> Parang ganun yun eh. While they were uh, about to launch the, the counter-attack, ayun, sumugod na talaga ang Legion. Nasa borders na ng, ng John Federacy. They decimated the borders, but who came along to, uh, to, well, to give back up Nordic Squadron with their, with, with their Reagan leads. Wow. Okay. As if, uh, as if they never left the battlefield. Talagang, especially si Shin, tuwang-tuwa pa nga ito na sasabak na, na, sasabak na sila sa tunay na labanan. Grabe. So, well, while this, while all of this carnage was going on, courtesy of Nordlik, si Frederica nagkaroon ng vision. Nakita niya na parang si Kiri ay may sinusugod na iba. Because uh, I think she now knows that Kiri's brain is now the Legion. So, ginagamit na siya sa, in, one of their, in one of their machines. So, nakita niya tuloy ngayon, parang at parang kumukorelate yung yung itsura ni Kiri kay Shin. So by the time the Nordic Squadron came back from a really successful counter-offensive, uh, kinumpronta niya si Shin. Shin, you idiot. You're just like Kiri. Eh, well, no objection si Kiri. Si Kiri, tuloy. Si Shin. Because... His own Regan Leaf was battered. Yung halos mabura na yung logo niya sa labas. At dito, mayroon siyang, mayroon siyang sugat dito. Tamaan siya. While all of this was happening, let's just say that the Republic of San Magnolia is slowly falling. Wala na ang 86 nila. So, todo na yung, yung advancement ng Legion. They're now in District 1 yung pinakakapitolyo ng San Magnolia. Lena, or now known as Bloody Regina, sets out to... to... what you call this? To sync with all the processors. Pero pinigilan siya ng angka niya na general. Eh, pero eh, eh, sabi lang ni Lena, I will do what I can to save my country. Ewan ko lang sa inyo. So... Nabayan na siya ng kanyang uncle to, to do what she wants. She was able to reach her control room. Ayun. Naki, naki, sumik na siya sa, sa mga natitira pang processors. And, yung mga natitira pang processors sa GHQ. Ang sabi lang niya, this is the moment we're waiting for. Let's go to war with the Legion. So, inutos niya lahat ng processors na to, to defend District 1. So, magsisiputahan natin yun. Now, final scene. Kinikwento na ni... It's actually a post-credit. Kinikwento ni, ni Frederica kung ano yung nakita niya. And, um, tinatanong... Tinatanong kasi nila, nila Raiden kung nasan ngayon si Kiri. Uh, according to Frederica, she saw Kiri attacking the Grand Moor. 
the Grand Moor is the um, kumbaga, uh, yung clock tower, if you like a big bend on District 1, it's already fallen. So, in assume nila right then na uh, looks like the Republic has fallen. Pero, nung tinanong nila kung nasaan si Tyrion, kung nandun pa siya, sinabi ni Frederica, wala na. And all of a sudden, um, may na-receive the psychic message si Shin, galing kay Kiri. Uh, the words are, I'm going to kill you. So, all of a sudden, blinding light. Kumbaga, siguro sumugod na rin ang Legion. Unexpectedly. Wow. I don't have much story to tell kasi tal yeah. Well, let's just break it down first ARD style Face From the get-go Tense ang facing Bakit? The Legion has finally launched their all-out attack Yung sinasabi ni, ni Shin All along Pero Ayaw siyang, ayaw siyang paniwalaan ng mga higher ups ng Jad Federacy Ang naniniwala na sa kanya Yung presidente, si Ernst Of course, si Frederica And their immediate superior, si... I already forgot her name Si Colonel, eh basta Colonel yun Yun lang, yun lang ang naniniwala sa kanya So, they did uh, They did uh, they did prepare In fairness to them Especially yung Colonel Ta Talagang dinesign niya yung Regan Leaf just, just for the 86 to pilot it Kasi sanay sila sa ganitong... Uh, close spaces and pero in combat efficiency only an eight only a former 86 can can pilot a Regan Lee that's according to her design kaya this is what the pacing will make you realize right so eh, siyempre gera alam mo magbagal ka rito <laughs> nagbagal lang ang pacing nung pumukos lang camera kila Lena uh, on the side of San Magnolia. So dun lang talaga pero nakita naman natin lahat if you if you seen the episode 2 guys. The 86 have fallen pero as a parting shot ng pinaka commander nila nag uh, ano dito? Nag suicide bombing. Took taking out uh taking out a part of the legion with them. So pero um it's all too late. The Legion has now penetrated District 1. Bumagsak ng Grand Moon. So, that's how, uh, that's how tense the pacing was. Talagang, mapipil mo ang, ang, ang gera rito. Talagang, ramdam na ramdam mo na, talagang, uh, the Legion is going, is now going all out against all its enemies at the same time. Simultaneous attack kasi. Go naman! First gearship here was um, nung uh, time na ginising ni, ni Raiden si Shin. Eh, hindi pa naman dapat. Why did I call it a gearship? Simple lang. This, uh, this gearship shows us how uh, trusting Shin is to his comrades. Especially si Raiden. Kasi yun, yun ang XO niya nung, nung 86 pa sila. Alam na kasi ni Raiden kung anong gusto mangyari ni Shin. There's a good reason uh, for him. There's a good reason why why Shin woke him up like that. So, ganun, kasama niya. Ah, oh, ganun ba? Sige. Gigising ko rin mga ibang kasama natin. Well, while they, while, while, while Raiden was doing that, Shin threatened the control room. <laughs> Siguro nga, tinutukan pa niya ng baray yung, yung head ng control room. Sound the alarm! Siguro, it's his way of saying, Sound the alarm! The Legion is now here! <laughs> Control room obliged! O sige! Sound the alarm! Uh, sinabi pa rin siguro nila na this is according to Lieutenant Nosen. Eh, yung mga ibang personal, hindi naliniwala. Eh, when, uh, when, when, probably when request for backup came from the, from, from the Board of Defense, Eh, talagang, naniwala na. But, it's rather, don't you think it's too late to believe Shin's word right now? 
This is what the gear ship. This is what this gear ship will tell you. This is what this gear ship will make you think. Second gear ship was when Frederica um felt that uh, Kiri was trying to contact her. Siguro pinapakita ni Kiri kung ano yung nakikita niya at ipinadama niya kay Frederica because. I don't know, um, ninja machine brains, yeah, they have, they have this, uh, this inner psychic ability na kung baga, they can own, they can communicate with the people closest to them when they were, when they still had a physical body. Kasi ganun yung kuya ni Shin sa kanye. That's why he was able to, um, to euthanize his own brother in season one. And, wow, it's quite scary. This is what this gear ship will tell you. This is how scary the Legion can be. Okay? Even through psychic means, they will, uh, they will, they will pursue their intent of, uh, of conquering you. Yun ang, yun ang sinasabi sa akin ng gear ship na to. Final gear ship was when Leno was confronted by your uncle, na general. Bahay ko tinawag na gear ship. Simple. We now get to see how the Legion is attacking San Magnolia and how Lena is responding to it. So, natural. Nasa District 1 na nasa mukha na na nga eh. Alam mang tumunga nga pa siya. So, she might as well gather all remaining processors and staff defending the capital. Sa mandaling yung mga ibang yung mga ibang superior siya, ayun, nagiinuman. Ito namang uncle niya thinks it's already a lost cause dahil wala nang 86 he's no longer uh, relying yeah depending on the 86 to defend them because he is well aware of how of how badly the, the republic mis how badly the republic treated them he's well aware of that general she so he's not so he's no longer expecting help from the 86 yeah well Kung gumibat na ang, ang uncle niyang general, si Lena, nope, I'm not giving up this capital yet. So I, I'll, I'll still, basically, she still wants to do her job as a, uh, as a handler. Pero, in order, to, in order for her to successfully defend the capital, she has to uh, synchronize with all, uh, with all processors, not just the remaining 86. You're a soldier. You, your job is to defend. Your job is to fight to the death. So, well, Lena's just doing her job. Bloody Regina is just doing her job. Kaya ako din na gear shift to. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, all of them will play a role down the line in this anime, if not the next episode. Plot-wise, Malinis. Talagang yung um, the war-oriented continuity of this episode talagang, na, talagang nasunod eh. Na, Mapo-focus ang attention mo as the viewer to, to, what, is, to what, is, uh, what is going on in this episode. Talagang gera na from all fronts. From, from the side of the Federacy to the side of San Magnolia. Things are looking bleak for the Republic. Natutuwa ang sila Shin? Probably. Uh, natutuwa ba si Lena? 50%. But she, has, she still has to do her job as a soldier of the Republic. And that's what this plot will, uh, will make you realize. Kung hindi, kalinis, kung hindi ganito kalinis ang plot ng episode na to, we might not be we might not be fast enough to appreciate what is uh, what is going on here. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. I tell you guys, probably this is season two's best episode so far. Because, um, Shin's prediction. Well, uh, nagkatotoo na ang, sinan ang matagal lang sinasabi ni Shin that 
The Legion is preparing for an all-out offensive against all its enemies. Excuse me. So I, ca I can't wait for the next episode for what's going to happen, especially the final scene. Ano to? Uh, Pumo sa ming nakapasok na rin sa sa Federacy ang ano ang ang Legion. Eh, they already had they were already um sent running with their tail between their legs by by Nordic Squadron. Wow. I really want to know what happened. So, 86 part 2 episode 5. Ni It's a great Battle episode. Wow! Oh! Two thumbs up! Alam nyo, hindi ko na patatagal yung review na to. Because I want to psychologically prepare myself for the next episode. I really want to know if, uh, if San Magnolia can hold off the Legion this time. Sabi nga ng, ng uncle ni Lena. Uh, we're leaving up. Something to this effect. We're living in a country where um, where lazy citizens do nothing but complain. Something to that effect, huh? Kaya, uh, to him, it's a lost cause na kasi no one else is going to defend the capital. And he's already counting out the citizenry, the, the common folk. Wala. Baka yung mga siguro, mga yung siguro, pati yung mga 86 sigurado, uh, ilalaglag na tayo ng mga yan. It's their chance now. Pero, uh, hindi naman naniniwala si Lena. Uh, as a soldier of the, of the Republic, she still has that duty to protect the capital. Kaya, so, umiiral pa rin yung pagiging sundalo niya ng Republic. Will there be a chance now for Shin, uh, for... Nordic Squadron to uh, uh, to see Lena again. That chance has been raised to about forty percent. Because uh, in all indications, San Magnolia is going to fall. No matter what, uh, no matter what Lena, no matter what tactics Lena employs here to to defend the capital. Talagang pabagsak na ang San Magnolia. And probably the only um, yeah, the only country that will be left standing is the Jab Federacy, uh, because they have Nordic Squadron, uh, composed of former eighty six, uh, ang tinagore ang Monsters of the Republic. Yeah, kapanapanamik ang magiging susunod na episode. Kaya, I will do nothing but to psychologically prepare myself for a whole week. So again, 86 part 2, episode 5. Two thumbs up. So what do we do? Siempre, don't drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. Kaya, habang hinihintay natin yan mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this night. So well, the episode started off with uh, with uh, si Hiyoko uh, trying to well begging Teroto to give her some intensive training, even to the point that suhulan siya ng pastries. <laughs> eh, eventually, pumay si Teroto. Okay, so uh, intensive training, uh, what you call it started. So they've been got. So, kumbaga, ang wager nila, pastries. <laughs> okay? So, nakarami sila, napansin sila ni, ni Sakura. Ano ba ginagawa? Ang dami pastries dito. So, yun ba? So, kinwento ni Tero to. Eh, I'm just uh, giving Hyoko some special, uh, some intensive training. So, but, uh, nagibalay mo na sila ng landas kasi, Sakura decided to to look for challengers for Teroto. Now, 
Um, they were as um, Teroto and Hiyoko were looking for the shop that sells special edition croissants. Eh, dito sila nag, nag separate sa buhana ng isang shrine where Hiyoko goes to goes across the street to to look for that shop. Eh ngayon hindi makapag decide si Teroto kung saan kung saan pupunta. All of a sudden, this little girl challenges him to a battle. Yun nga lang, ang pinagtatakang ko rito, walang winager na chips. Kasi, uh, it's the only way to make this uh, make this battle official. So, okay. So, tinanggap ni Tero to. As the battle was going on, there were um, shades of his... Uh, kumaga, part of his memories were slowly getting uh, coming back through this uh, through this battle at ipinapaalala sa kanya ng, ng ng batang ito now patatakas ako bakit ang dami naman ng babae ito sa akin sino ba to? so as uh, uh, the battle went back and forth actually talagang back and forth siya it is pero to is now down to one life yung kalaban naman niya Uh, I think lima o apat pa So talagang After uh, A seesaw first half of the battle The latter half became one-sided na Then All of a sudden uh, Nag-launch na ng final attack Yung kalaban niya uh, he, wa- he was already Two hit attack yung, nangy- yung mangyayari So yung isang life niya mababawi then another attack uh, he loses the game so gumawa siya ng counter but uh, kumounter naman din yung kalaban na minigate yung effect ng card niya so natuloy yung second attack yung, yung second hit talo si Tero to it is the first time the main photon uh, experienced a loss in this anime So, eventually, nalaman na natin kung sino ang kalaban niya. She is Kika, the king, who also happens to be Teroto's younger sister. Na- naalala na niya in the final scene. This was the final scene, folks. Because by the time na uh, tinakas na siya ni, tinakas na ni Ishinomi si Kika, parating pa lang si Sakura nun. At yun, uh, sinabi na ni Tero to, Kika is my little sister. At hindi siya, na, hindi makapaniwala si Tero to na si Kika ang king. Talagang, okay, let's break this episode ng ARD style para medyo ma-deep dive natin ng, ng kahit konti man na para uh, to get a total understanding of what, the, what went down in this episode. Face! Natural. Middle half of the episode tense because of this battle scene. Natural lang yon. So right now, I'm going to dispose of uh, uh, of our assessment of the pacing. No complaints, tayo. It's typical in a card game anime to have uh, a tense pacing during a battle scene. But uh, special mention, the final one fourth of the episode. Medyo Medyo naging tense pa rin Dahil Sa revelations na Na lumabas Right? So yun lang tandaan ninyo Flow naman First gear shift here was when Well Kika The, the little girl who challenged uh, Teroto to a battle Eventually we know now as Kika The king The king herself Uh, yun nga, sina, hinamon niya si Tero to to a battle. Why did I call it a gear shift? Simple lang. Because in one scene, um, inutusan niya si Ishinome na, mak- na mangibagkita siya kay Tero to. Ito pala ang dahilan niya. She wants to battle Tero to. She wants to battle her big brother to a, to a, to a battle. Who is, well, 
Uh, technically, the strongest battler right now. Uh, even to, uh, siguro, uh, parang parang god tier na rin yung lakas niya. Yung, yung galing niya sa, sa build divine. Then, Mok, she eventually beats Tero to. Yun nga lang, ang, uh, what this gear ship will also tell you that it's an unofficial battle. Walang we need your na chips. So, um, by the time Sakura com uh, comes to assist, uh, siguro talagang naging concern ng si Sakura dahil natalo si Tero to. Now, I think hindi pa niya alam na kung official battle ito or hindi. But it's obvious, it's an unofficial battle. Kasi wala nang itinayang chips ang ang bawat player. At saka walang dealer na nag-observe sa battle. That's what this leadership uh, will tell you. It's an unofficial match. So, Terato was lucky. His win... Whatever win streak he has now, intact pa rin yun. But, um, psychologically, I don't think he's, uh, he's in a, he's in good shape right now. Final gear shift was, of course, when, when Kika beats Tero to. Bakit ko tinawag na gear shift. Dito, parang, at this point in the, the episode, parang nawalan na ng gana na hamunin ang king si Tero to kasi alam na niya kung sino ang king it's his own sister si Kika ah, na, ah si Kika now Tero to has a psychological dilemma in his hands and ang ang nakakasama pa rito nakita lahat ng studyante niya si Hiyoko because Hiyoko was was witness to it all dahil Uh, during the course of this battle, hindi sila mahanap ni Sakura on in her yung sensors niya. Wala. So, talagang at this point, talagang nag-aalan na, si, nag na lang si Sakura. But, the point here is this for this gear shift. This gear shift will uh, trigger a psychological dilemma to te, uh, in Teroto. Now that he knows that the king is actually his sister, ano, tuloy pa rin ba yung goal niya na talunin ng king? Eh, di pa, eh, mukhang pinaglaroan lang siya rito eh. Pinaglaroan, pinaglaroan lang siya na sarili niyang kapatid dito. So, what do you do now, Teroto? You wanna ask him. So, this, here's his delight to, dalawa lang yun. Definitely, the impact of these two will play a role down the line in this anime, if not the next episode. But wise, I'm gonna make this short and sweet. Malini ang plot. All because of the battle scene. Sidi, um, although it's unofficial, it's a psychologically crucial battle scene for Teroto. Bakit? But, eh, dito niya nalaman na ang king pala eh, kapatid niya. Because, practically, no one knows the, the true identity of the king. Now, he knows It's Kika Ang kanyang Ang kanyang nakababatang kapatid But Based on On this screen of plot You will get to see me Paano naging king si Kika? Okay, sabihin natin na uh, Natalo niya rito si Tero to We can say that she has every right to become king I don't think so kasi, kung gusto mo maging king, marami kang magdadaanan based on what has, what has happened in the past three, in the previous three episodes. So, I don't think Kika became king because she, um, she had a long, hard road there. She, uh, earned herself the right. I don't think so. Because, Lumalabas ngayon, may handler siya. Medyo, medyo may damdam na lalaki. Eh, ang tanong pa, ang tanong pa kanya dito kay Kika eh. Who gave you, I didn't give you, I didn't give you permission to go out. So, 
You can see that uh, Kika is just a plant. Pwede rin. Kaya, right now, you can question uh, the king's uh, the king's origins because of that scene. Yung sa... Tawa dito. Yung sa... Uh, on, on that scene. I don't consider it the final scene, actually. Yung scene na yun. Although, it is the actual final scene. For me, the final scene was yung... Yung, uh... Tawag dito? Yung pagkaka... Pagkaka... Uh, yung... Yung nakita, sila ni, nakita na sila ni, ano, ni Sakura, finally. Yun yun. Because it is so crucial a scene that uh, it will greatly affect the main protagonist's way of thinking. But the actual final scene was this, the, the one I'm mentioning, yung uh, kumbaga uh, sinabihan siya ng handler ni sinabihan siya ng handler niya na uh, I don't give you permission to go out. Parang ganun eh. So, you can now question Kika's uh, role to, be, to becoming the king. Palagay ko plan lang ito eh. That's what the plot will make you realize. Ganun kasi kalini ito. Now, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. Talagang, wow! Uh, seeing Teroto being beaten by, not just the king, by her, by his own sister, it's, it's hard to watch, okay? It's really hard to watch. Lanat kung medyo uh, second half ng battle naging one-sided na. Uh, you will feel sorry for Tero to. And now he has to deal with the with this dilemma of sorts. Na the one he wants to challenge is not the king. Sarili niya kapatid dito. So uh, we, you can raise the question to Tero now. What do you do now? So, Bill Divide Go Black, Episode 4. So, ano, tuloy pa ba natin ang anime na to? Or tuloy pa rin ba ang laban mo, Tero to? Those are the, those are the questions you, you really need to raise for this anime. Kaya, really wanna see how, uh, how the aftermath is going to go down in the next episode. So again, Build Divide Cold Black Episode 4. Thumbs up. So what do we do now? While we're uh, while we're pondering on the events of the final scene, Simple na. we wait for next week and watch the next episode. So we're not in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this night.